Brewers. Milwaukee was seeing double vision of their former farmhand as the Indians outfielder went deep twice last night. The Tribe offense is alive and well, especially at the top of the order. And Cody Anderson hopes that continues as the Tribe looks to continue to boogie. Not just on Sports Time Ohio. Cloudy once again in downtown Cleveland, but it looks like the rain has moved out. We're ready for baseball. Indians Brewers wrapping up this brief two-game series here tonight. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The top three hitters in the Indians lineup last night were amazing. They combined for nine hits and nine runs batted in, and that was more than enough for the Indians. Boy, that's a night you dream of when you're in the top three spots. Not only did they set the table, they cleaned it up, starting with Jason Kipnis. Started off with a couple of doubles and then added a single to it. And Francisco Lindor continues to hit the ball very, very hard since the All-Star break. And Michael Brantley had a couple of long balls last night. And it was fun to watch, especially when it's against your former team. When you look at all three of them, Kipnis leading the league and hitting. 17th time for a three-hit game this year. Francisco Lindor leading all rookies in batting average. And you can see what he's doing since the All-Star break. Michael Brantley as well. He has been on fire. This guy is fun to watch, leading the league in doubles, and this guy's continuing uh, to play very well. Unfortunately, at the end of the game last night, a little bad news came out afterwards. Carlos Carrasco does indeed have to go on the DL, but Terry Francona said get him a cortisone shot. Shouldn't be anything more than that. Well, let's hope not anyway, because September's coming. You can expand the rosters, and he's pitched very well. So hopefully, Carlos said he's got a few more starts left in him for the rest of the year. Let's hope that's true. But tonight, it'll be Cody Anderson, who's coming off the disabled list. He had the left oblique. He made one other start against Milwaukee earlier in the year, and they roughed him up a little bit. He'll be facing Jimmy Nelson in his last 11 starts, 7-1 and one and a 239. So he's pitching very well for the Brewers. All right, when we come back, Andre Knott joins us, and we'll hear from Carlos. Carrasco, his thoughts on having to go on the DL late in the season. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by WB Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
Atlanta shoots one deep left. Is it fair? It is. Fair ball in the corner. There's a smash to second. It's kicked away by Jeanette. And Segura can't get to it in time. Brantley sends a drive to deep right field. Santana back. He's out of room. It's out of here. There's another one. Deep right field. Back is Santana. Go on to Souvenir City. And the 2-2 pitch is strike three called. This game is over. So the Indians winners in five of their last six here at Progressive Field. 59 and 66 overall on the season. Swinging the bats extremely well. Unfortunately, some bad news as far as the pitching is concerned with Carlos Carrasco having to go on the disabled list as we check out our injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at El Canel. He got a cortisone shot. They don't think there's anything structurally wrong. Doesn't look like it's going to be a long-term issue. And with more on that, let's go down to Andre Nunn. First thing Carlos Carrasco told me, guys, he goes, look. He goes, I'm going to miss two starts, and I'm going to have six more starts this season, and I plan on winning 18 games. So he's not concerned about the injury, but he doesn't like that there's injuries coming at this point in time in the season. A matter of fact, he feels like if it was a different time in the season, a different part of the season for the Indians, he probably wouldn't go on the DL. But this is why he went on. He talks about after his start in New York, feeling something a little different than usual. Hey, you know what? I just feel one time. You know, but in New York, I feel when I, you know, when I ended the game, I just come back to the training room, just feel a little bit. It's not uh, serious. It's just a little bit of inflammation there, and that's it. So we'll see you around the team, and you'll be back to go in two weeks. Yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Well, that's what happens. You feel a little tenderness in that shoulder. They say it's bursitis. He had a shot, and from what Carlos says, he'll be back in two weeks. So, uh, you know, hopefully that is the case, and he doesn't spend any more time on that DL because you'd like to see him finish something off that has been very, very good year for him to this point. Uh, he's given the Indians a tremendous one-two punch, as he did a year ago when yeah. Corey Kluber was on his way to winning the Cy Young Award. Carlos Carrasco in the second half was right. as good as anybody in baseball. No doubt about it. And you, you, you want him to finish off what you start. You don't want to end the year on a DL, so hopefully he'll come back, and we'll find out in two weeks. Josh Tomlin pitched well last night. Gave up a few home run balls, but the fact that the Indians gave him a lot of run support, he was able to work with that and pitch his way to a victory. Now it's Cody Anderson who makes his return to the ball club. Well, he was so brilliant in his first few starts with the Tribe. And then things went south on him in a hurry, ended up on the DL. And now an opportunity once again. He'll face a Milwaukee lineup that looks like this for Craig Council, the Milwaukee Brewers skipper. It's brought to you by Toyota. Scooter Jeanette moves into the leadoff spot tonight. Jonathan Lucroy batting second, Ryan Braun third, Adam Lynn cleanup, Chris Davis fifth, Domingo Santana sixth, Elian Herrera, Gene Segura, and Logan Schaefer rounded out. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher is going to be Cody Anderson. His first time since uh, August 7th, his start against Minnesota, where he went in two, thirds, uh, two and two-thirds innings, gave up five hits and six runs in that start. His one other start against Milwaukee was not a good one. That one went two and two-thirds of work also. Uh, did not get a decision, but gave up ten hits and four runs. What they did, they jumped him early. They knew he was throwing strikes early, and they were very aggressive on the first pitch. So let's see if he can make an adjustment here. It's nice to see Cody Anderson back and in that rotation. Let's check out the defense behind him tonight. It's brought to you by Jeep. In the outfield, it's Brantley on left, Almonte in center, Chisholm Hall in right, Ramirez at third, Lindor at short, Kipnis is at second, Sands at first, Gomes doing the catching. Tim Welke, the crew chief, has the plate tonight. Chris Siegel is at first base. Mike Everett at second. Tim Timmons down at third. Yeah, Our he, window system's game time temperature, once again, strange. I mean, unseasonably cool, just 64 degrees tonight. And, Rick, it rained, and it's raining now as we start the game, most of the afternoon. Looked like the rain was gone, but it's coming down once again here at the outset. Well, uh, I know one thing. It rained on the east side of town a lot. Uh, on the way home last night, it wasn't raining here when I left. Started to go home, and it was raining a lot. So. Yeah, you're right. As soon as we'll we see. walked out of the ballpark, we yes. we noticed the raindrops were falling, and they're falling at the outset here this evening. So 
Scooter Jeanette stands in, ready to get us underway for Milwaukee. And Cody Anderson's first pitch is fouled back. That's the one thing the Brewers did uh, in that last start. They knew Cody Anderson's a strike thrower, so they got aggressive early. And this is a team that likes to hit that first pitch. Low and away. One ball, one strike. Yes, he did. Tim Welke, the crew, the crew chief, the home plate umpire, he said, yes, you did. And so the count is one and two. Down low with it. Fastball, change up, little cutter. Anderson the line and the 2 2 to Jeanette. Swung out and missed. He strikes him out. That was the change up right there from Cody Anderson. Watch him swing right over the top. Yeah, that's what a good change. That's going to be our circle K strikeout. You can see the movement going down and away. This is how he holds it. It's like a, like a little three finger grip, and it all it goes down very well. That'll bring up Jonathan Lucroy, who had a monster game for Milwaukee last night in a loss. He went three for four and hit two home runs, and looked very much like the player from a year ago. That player led all of baseball in doubles last season, but Luke Roy got off to a, a dreadful start this year. Then he broke the toe, took time coming back. and You know, you get hurt early sometimes. You just never have time to recover. He had a tremendous year last year. Hit to right field. In comes Lonnie Chisenhall. And there are two down. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. How will the layoff affect Cody Anderson? Well, so far, so good. Ten for nine. There you go. You got to have ten for nine. That's ten hits in nine straight games here in this ballpark. They've been able to, they've been putting a lot of hits, a lot of runs on the board here at home. Low and away, ball one to Ryan Braun. This is a guy that got on top of a high fastball yesterday and drove it out to right field for a two-run homer. Swung out and missed. One and one to count. Braun now with 23 home runs on the year, 23 doubles. Now the two on offering. Blistered foul. Holy mackerel. That got into the crowd. I mean, there's you have no chance getting out of the way. No, of that thing. you did not. Thank goodness that hit a, a, an empty seat and re deflected back on the play. Ooh. You're right. There's no chance of getting out of the way. As a hitter, you know when you hit the ball, it's it, it's going into play and someone's going to be there. But you could see he's had a deep sigh of relief, thinking, "Thank goodness." Shoots that foul the other way. That pitch right there is what makes him such a good hitter. After coming inside and pulling one, he's able to foul it off and stay alive. Now 
And the 2-2. A little bit outside on a full count. Not a bad idea trying to get him to expand, but he wouldn't do it. Two down, bases empty. Big Adam Lynn waiting on deck. And the payoff pitch. Took a little something off, and it's fouled away. Right now, at this point, it's been basically a fastball change-up mix by Anderson. Again, the 3-2, and that's high, ball four. Two out. Lock will keep the inning alive for Adam Lynn. Well, last night, the Indians handled Lynn. He was 0 for 4. Fastball strike at the knees. You know, when you look at the work of uh, Cody Anderson to this point, this is his ninth start. He averages under 14 pitches per inning, so that's when I say he's a strike thrower. He goes out there, and he's going to make the hitter swing the bat more times than not. Right back to him. Cody's got it. He'll flip it to first. And the Brewers are out here in the top half of inning number one. The Indians are coming to bat. Jason Kipnis is getting ready to take his swings against Jimmy Nelson. The Indian starting lineup is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. After Kipnis, it's Francisco Lindor, then Michael Brantley. Santana, Chisinau, Gomes in the middle. Lonnie riding a seven-game tear. Abraham Almonte, Jerry Sands, and Jose Ramirez rounding it out. Well, Jimmy Nelson is our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher this evening for the Brewers. In his last 11 starts, he has been on fire, 7-1. A 2.39 ERA, so that means after the All-Star game, he's undefeated, 4-0. Uh, he just uh, everything clicked. He got it's a tale of two seasons for this guy. The first half of the year, not very good, but it, he is on a roll right now. He had a streak of 25 and two-thirds innings without a, allowing an earned run. And a fastball strike to Jason Kipnis. Rain falling a bit heavier now here in the bottom of the first. That's got to be coming off the lake, huh? Just swirling around. Look at it, just straight down, dude. Uh -huh. There's hardly any breeze to speak of. Uh -huh. 
And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Left-handers have hit 296 off them with 10 homers on the year. Right-handers, just a buck 94 with six homers. Kipnis bounces it foul. Boy, not by much. Lind was able to go over there and try a backhanded dive, but he couldn't come up with it, but it was foul. Yep, that was about a foot foul. He had coverage. He was reaching over the line. Outside, he missed. James Jacob Nelson. He's 26 years old now. Kipnis chased one up high, and Nelson gets a strikeout. Let's check out the Brewers' defense. I mean, they had a tough night last night. They're at last in fielding percentage in the National League. Davis in left, Schaefer in center, Santana over in right, Herrera at third, Segura at short, Gannett at second, Linda's at first, Luke Croy behind the plate. That defense is brought to you by G. Francisco Lindor. Lindor is hitting five straight. Batting 378 in the month of August. Breaking ball down low. Ball to strike. Two and one. That's way outside. Three balls and a strike. Well, Lindor has been very consistent recently. Has hit. Safely in 18 of his last 20 games and always seems to be in the middle of something. That's ball four. The Indians have a one out base runner here in the first. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. The Indians have 10 or more hits in eight straight home games. First time they've done that since 1999. Some of the numbers that the Indians have put up offensively this year are almost counter to what they've been as a team offensively. I mean, take that stat, for example. Take the fact that they now boast the number one and number two batting averages in the American League, Kipnis and Michael Brantley. Even Francisco Lindor, given he's only played 60 games, but he's the best batting average among rookies in the American League. Yeah, it's it's hard to figure out. Well, they've been hot. I mean, as far as swinging, they're hitting now with runners in scoring position yeah. is one of the big problems. I mean, not problems, one of the big issues that is solving the problem. I've been scoring with two outs, getting base hits, and, and they're hitting with runners in scoring position much more consistently than they have all year long. In the last seven games, they totaled 32 runs, and 16 have come with two outs. So that may uh, that makes a big deal. Brantley shoots one left side, foul by inches. Well, you take last night's game, for example. The Indians scored two in the first, two in the second, two in the fourth, three in the fifth, and two more in the eighth. That's the second time this month that they've had five multi-run innings in a game. Yeah. They did it against the Twins earlier this month. The last time they did that in one month, 1936. That was a team that had a lineup with Cleveland stalwarts like Hal Trotsky, Earl Averill, Joe Vosmick, 
and a 17 year old rookie from Iowa named Bob Feller. I mean, that's how long ago it was. Yeah. So sometimes you look at these numbers. Runner goes, ball's in the dirt, hit the umpire, skips away. Lindor's at second, and he'll stay right there. Well, uh, you know what? If Lindor had any idea, of course you're trying to steal the base. He goes in head first and steals the base. But that pitch was down in front. It comes back and hits the umpire, and he had no clue that Luke Croy had to go back. You see, it hit him in the shoulder. Brantley jumps out of the way. But when you're trying to steal a base, it was a straight steal. He goes in head first. He didn't pick up the ball because you could see Luke Croy taking a peek. But he is in scoring position now with one out. Tim Welke's going to have a nice bruise yeah. tomorrow. Meanwhile, it's a one ball, one strike count for Michael Brantley. Takes some ball in the dirt. Well, even with the wet track, these guys must have a time on him because they're off and running, and they, they probably should be because he looks like he's very deliberate or slow to the plate delivering the baseball. Brantley awaits the 2-1 from Jimmy Nelson. Inside, he missed three balls and a strike. Greg Council took over early this year when Ron Renicky was fired. Brewers got off to a, just a dreadful start. They played a little over 500 though over the last two months. 3-1 pitch and pulls it foul. Where Milwaukee has really had troubles of late is winning away from Miller Park. They've lost 10 of their last 12 on the road. A full count for Brantley with Carlos Santana waiting on deck. Jimmy Nelson was a second-round pick of the Brewers five years ago out of the University of Alabama. Down low, second straight walk for Nelson. Well, he has 54 walks on the year, you know, in his 155 innings, so that is quite a bit. So two on two out, or two on one out for Santana. He was one for five last night. Carlos doubled in a run in the first inning. And that's what impressed Terry Francona about his team's performance last night is that they were able to score early and then they just kept the pressure on. Yes. Early and often, as they say. Nice job of blocking a ball by Lucroy. Boy, that guy, he's, he's throwing. That's the second time he's had a pitch way out in front of home plate. I don't know if this ball jumped up and got him. It looked like on the side. Oh, he's lucky. That neck was exposed. But you go out in front, and that ball is like, that's seven feet in front of home plate. How he kept it in front, I really don't know. But it saved those guys from moving up, and it keeps the double play in order. So that's a terrific job by Lucroy. Right now, this guy having a tough time finding the plate. You look at him in the first inning this year, his ERA is 684. Like some starters, it takes them a while to get settled in. He's throwing more balls and strikes to this point, the 1-0. Santana smokes it, but it's caught by Jeanette on one hop. The second for one on the first. An inning-ending double play. 
No score after one. as they settle in for this game between the Indians and the Brewers. Don't know if that's going to do any good to this point. Our Levin Furniture player profile is on Chris Davis. Not that he went to high school in Glendale, Arizona, right down the road from the Indian Spring Training home and not far yeah. from the Brewers, Diggs and Maryvale. That is true. Played at Cal State Fullerton, seventh round pick in 09. Last night he was 0 for 4, struck out three times, and he looked like a guy who had hit four home runs in his last four games. He was trying. Well, he hit one curveball out here foul, but he put a big swing on it like it was a softball. He has three two-homer games this month. One against San Diego, St. Louis, and Miami. Well, sometimes you get that long ball, and that's... Uh, you know, it comes in cycles. You get hot, and it seems to jump off your bat. It can go cold, too, when it's not going well. That has uh -oh. hit a ton, and that's not coming back. No, sir. Milwaukee will play from in front as they take a one nothing lead on Chris Davis's 17th home run of the year. Well, there was no doubt as soon as he hit that one. He caught up to that fastball and gave it a ride. This is called getting right down the barrel of the bat. That was metal, and he was trying to run it in on him. But, boy, he just put that front foot down, and that thing took off. You can tell by the crack of the bat. Seventh home run given up by Anderson. Domingo Santana takes a strike. Fouled back. Santana homered last night. A big, strong guy. Well, he hit one out the other way last night and came over from where, Houston in the Gomez Mike Fires trade. This is where Cody Anderson is going to have to get a feel. You're going to have to slow it down and back off a little bit instead of trying to throw harder with these guys because they're putting on some good swings early. And you better locate it too. You know, I have seen just the change up as far as an off speed. I haven't seen a breaking ball, haven't seen a cutter. So much for the cool and damp conditions. He hit that one. That was <laughs> like we were in London. That thing got through the fog <laughs> and the rain. 
These are like the old days when Cleveland and Milwaukee would get together mm. over on the shores, either Lake Michigan or here. Played a lot of games in the rain. They're used to it. Now, of course, with Miller Park, it's covered. Missed inside, full count. We even used that park as our home park back in 2007. That when we went right. up there for three games against the Angels. The 3 2. Swung on and missed. Anderson with his second strikeout of the night. One down here in inning number two. Let's go down to the arid Andre Knott. Or let's Thank not. you, Andre. <laughs> he's so uh, he's uh, he's not <laughs> airy. He's, he's so wet. His microphone's not working. It's working now. I'm done. Watch, he's gonna get electrocuted. <laughs> I'll wait till after this pitch and we can talk, Cody. Anderson. Well, we saw you on a, on the uh, Indians live, and uh, just wondering if you've recovered. I've recovered. I've brought many of jackets, and the rain just makes everything else feel fine. Cody Anderson found out that he was going to make this start on Monday, about an hour and a half before he was going to start for Lake County. He said he called his mom and smiled and says, hey, I don't got to pitch in the minors anymore. He goes, I get to come to the big leagues. The thing he's got to work on, guys, he's got to find something that wiggles when he's on the mound. Right. He's done very well with the fastball, very well with the changeup. The thing they're working with him right now, he's worked on this the last couple of weeks, is a cut fastball. When it's been good, it's been good. But Tito says when it's not good, it goes very far, and we've already saw that happen in this inning. Well, th there was a curveball. It was the first one I've seen. He, he's going to have to throw a spin or something that takes him off that because even the cutter that you throw is going to be hard. It's not going to you know back off a lot to go with that changeup. He's got to develop some kind of breaking ball. The 0-2 inside. He missed. A night like tonight might be time to break out the spitter. Well, you could, yeah. You're gonna, <laughs> you have enough moisture around, that's for sure. This is, this is crazy. One-two pitch. Down low. Threw it by him. Good fastball from Cody Anderson. Back-to-back -back strikeouts after the home run by Davis. Two down here in the second. There you go. Just a fastball outside edge. Challenged him. Got the swing and miss. And up comes Gene Segura. Takes a strike. Missed inside there, one and one. Shoots it foul. Madden. That's going like he, after he, Mad Dog he looked, again. It was like he was diving into the ball. He's going you the okay, other man? way. Love you, brother. <laughs> now the one two. Piece of that to stay alive. Gene Segura, not much of a power guy. He has hit four home runs on the year. His last home run came in Milwaukee off Danny Salazar. Well, he ran into that first pitch fastball, didn't he? I, I think it was back in Milwaukee. 
It's a Brewer team that they jump on that early pitch. Well, we you first noted pitch. you noted in Milwaukee they were aggressive. Oh. in those two games, uh, it was a first pitch homer. I think they hit 31 of them on first pitch this year. And, and when they put it in play as a team, they have a 3.59 average when they swing at that first pitch. So they have had some success doing it. So why not? Full as a, count. As a pitcher, you just you know that coming in, and you're going to have to make some quality pitches. And they're just not trying, okay, let me throw a fastball to get strike one. You're going to have to pitch to them. The 3-2. Hit foul. Well, he's making them work to get through it. 41 pitches now for... Anderson in the, in the second inning, and I told you he was under, you, you know, normally 13.7. So let's say 28 pitches would be the average for his first two innings. So he has had to work. They only have the one hit, the solo home run. Well, and here you go. This is the ninth pitch to the number eight hitter in the lineup in this at bat. Swung on and missed. He finally got him, and he strikes out three in a row after the leadoff homer by Chris Davis. Milwaukee takes an early one nothing lead. One nothing Milwaukee at a rain-soaked progressive field. And it never started until the first pitch. Yeah. It was dry up until first pitch. Lonnie Chisnall going to lead it off here in the bottom of the second for Cleveland. Takes a strike. Lonnie was one for four with a run batted in last night. Look there out. goes the bat in the right field. That's a base hit in the, between first and second. Well, too bad the ball didn't go there. Now, is that something you think in a crew chief's mind, does that get their attention when you got rainy conditions like no, this? No, no, they keep it under, you know. You know, you have to use the pine tar. You have to use the rosin. They have gloves on. You know, that happens. He's using that claw now to make it much stickier for those gloves it shouldn't it just took off the tough part is when it's it's raining like this and that rain starts uh, cluttering up on the, on your helmet and it starts dripping in your eyes when you're looking for the baseball you just try and keep the brim clean two strike pitch that swing by Lonnie reminded me because tomorrow we have the Cleveland Indians charity golf outing and that reminded me of a tournament several years ago we were playing, I and, and the skies opened up. And you were playing in the group behind me. 
We pulled over. We're like, t- we're we're gonna wait it out. You you came up and said we're playing through. <laughs> you swung and your club went farther than the ball went. I know. <laughs> After that, I think we called it quits. <laughs> Didn't have any claw. Or, hey, you uh, got to do what, the, what, what your your team wanted to do. You know the <laughs> partners you're playing with, and they said let's keep going. So mind if we play through. <laughs> Lonnie down on strikes, one away. You remember that, do you? Oh, that was a beautiful sight. (laughs) That'll bring up Jan Gomes, who went one for four last night. Straighten him up, ball one. Jimmy Nelson grew up in Niceville, Florida. And the Reds actually drafted him out of high school, but it was in the 39th round, so he went to Alabama on a baseball scholarship instead. And it worked out for the best. Pulled him off the bag, but a nice tag by Lynn to retire Gomes two away. They may want to take an eye on it and see if they tagged him in time before uh, Gomes hit first base. That throw brought him off. Wasn't sure if he tagged him. I mean, it was close, but from where I'm sitting, it was tough. But it, there could have been some daylight there. No, oh, right like on him. the sleeve. Yes, he did. Watch this, right on the sleeve there before that foot hit. So he did get him. Two away for Abraham Almonte. A little bit outside, ball one. Broke his bat, but it's a base hit for Almonte. Takes a big turn at first, but Santana quickly gets it back in. Two out single keeps the inning alive. Well, Indians first hit of the night. It cost him a bat, but you don't mind when it ends with a base hit off the end. And it was a fastball. And it was uh, away. It was running away, but he gets a base hit. The Indians first. You know, it's unfortunate that the, the track is a little muddy because with the the time that this guy, Nelson, delivers the ball to home plate, you would this would be a running game for the Indians. He's about 1-5 to the plate, which is slower, much slower than normal. Swing and a miss by Jerry Sands. Sands had one at bat last night. It came in the eighth inning and fly to center field. Down low, one ball, one strike. Jimmy Nelson last year was the Brewers minor league pitcher of the year. The organizational honor is named for Robin Yount, who was a former first round pick, played all 20 seasons in Milwaukee and was the first player to go into the Hall of Fame wearing a Milwaukee Brewers hat. The 1-1 runner goes. He went around, throw is not in time. Well, they're going to continue to run. I like it. Almonte with the second steal of the year, second of the night for the Indians. 
Even though it's a muddy track, he got a very good jump, and the throw is going to have to be perfect. Head down, good traction. Gets in there easily. Almonte is second stolen base. Now at least it gets a guy in scoring position with two outs. Breaking ball, and everybody Whoa, thought it was strike well, three, except you, the home plate umpire, Tim Welke. Yeah, he was walking to the dugout. He thought he had it, made a good pitch. It, it probably was a good pitch. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. You're right. Everybody but the umpire. You can see uh, 21 out of 26 when you try and steal a base against this guy, so your odds are in your favor. Stay aggressive. If, given the opportunity 2-2 two, two. low full count switch hitting Jose Ramirez waiting on deck will Nelson go once again to the breaking ball He's been trying to get Sands to chase it. The 3-2. He wouldn't do it. Three in a row, all three missed. One just barely. But with the base open, he walks Sands, and now he'll face Ramirez. They'll get live Indians baseball all season long with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with live radio broadcast, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Nelson's thrown 34 pitches, 18 balls, 16 strikes. Double play ball got him out of trouble in the first. Two on two out now here in the second. And that's low ball one. This was a lot like Willie Peralta last night where, you know, everything was all over the place. Maybe not quite as much as last night, but more balls than strikes. Well, last night the Indians had a pair of two-out RBI hits that accounted for three runs. And that's what they're looking for here, although at the rate he's going, I don't know how he might not have to swing. If you're Jose Ramirez, he's yet to throw a strike. And he's three and oh, all. Six straight, so yeah, why not? Just take it. Let him walk you. He had that one pitch where he was walking off the inning, and since that point he hasn't thrown that strike. There it is. A fastball right over the heart of the plate, three and one. Abraham Almonte at second base. Jerry Sands down at first. And the three one from Nelson. Ball four. The bases are loaded on back to back two out walks. Yeah, up comes Rick Kranitz, the pitching coach. No question. He has to come out and settle him down. He thought he was out of the inning after making a pitch, and then he, he's only been able to throw one strike since that point, and that was a 3-0 pitch. Sports Time Ohio's coverage of the high school football season kicks off this Friday night. The Brunswick Blue Devils are at Highland to open the Hornets' new stadium. Join Jeff Phelps, Frank Stams, and Ryan Cavanaugh for game one of the Road to Glory, Friday at 11, right here on Sports Time Ohio. Well, Rick Kranitz had to make some early trips to the mound last night as Willie Peralta lasted just two and two thirds innings. And at this rate, Jimmy Nelson might not last long. This will be his 40th pitch already. 
Both pitches up over 40. Kipnis takes its call to strike. Now, Jason went down swinging in the first. In off the plate. One on one. He's come out throwing fastballs at least first two to Kipnis. Maybe the message from Kranitz was like, don't forget about your fastball. He, he got curveball happy with Jerry Sands up there. Kipnis shoots it. Fair ball left field line. Abraham Almonte scores a tying run. Jerry Sands scores the go ahead run. Here comes Ramirez. He'll score two. Kipnis clears the bags. 3 1 Cleveland. Well, it looked like uh, in left field, Davis could have backhanded that ball. Two runs were going to score anyway, but he allows Ramirez to score. This will be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. A two out base hit. As we said, he stayed on it. Now, watch Davis in left field. He doesn't come up with the backhand, it gets underneath them. It'll probably be a base hit and an error right there on Davis. That enables Ramirez to come all the way around to score. So they'll give him a, a double, two RBIs, and then the error on Davis and left. So right back come the Indians, take a 3-1 lead. And Francisco Lindor is swing and a miss. Jason Kipnis with the 35 doubles. He and Michael Brantley, one and two in the American League in the double category. 38 for Brantley, 35 for Kipnis. Knocked down with a bare hand by Nelson. He throws no throw, and everybody's safe. Kipnis to third, and Lindor aboard on an infield single. He broke his bat, and it was almost like that maybe the, the fact that the ball wasn't coming back that hard, he thought maybe he could barehand it. Well, and it gets away. Now watch how he winds up after he gets to the ball. Instead of grabbing it and making a quick throw, he winds up. And he wasn't going to get the Lindor. He realized it. Now let me wind up the big long throw, and he's not going to make it. So it goes as an infield single. Rain coming heavily again. Looked like it was gone, but it's back. And Brantley, the eighth man to bat in the inning for the Indians. Probably raining as hard as it has since we started this game. It's just been strange. Players fighting through the elements, though. Chris Davis with a homer in the second top half to put Milwaukee ahead. The Indians come back with three. One of those runs scoring thanks to his miscue now, in left field. And, you know, you can tell right now it's affecting him out there. What? The rain. Brantley has to step out. He's got to dry off his bat. He's got to, you know, clean his helmet. It's affecting him. I thought you were talking about the Nelson and maybe the air was affecting him or the weather was affecting oh, him. Well, it could very well could be. We may see, you know, some diamond dust out here in between innings. We may even see the tarp, for goodness sakes. This thing's coming down pretty good. Lindor takes off, and there's not even a throw. Well, you can uh, run all day long on this guy. His second stolen base. Third for the Indians. Now the 1-1. One -one. Big bouncer. Lynn has it. And he'll just take well, it himself because Brantley fell coming out of the box. Strange start to this one. Indians in front, three to one after two.
keeping it as we go to the third inning. We go to Andre Knott, who's got a special guest. Yes, I'm hanging out with Brandon Saad, the newest Columbus Blue Jacket. Uh, Brandon, first and foremost, welcome to Ohio, because you're a Pittsburgh guy. So i got to say welcome, first and foremost, to Ohio. You going to be all right with that? Yeah, thanks. I'm happy to be here. All right, the first six first. You got to hang out earlier today with Jason Kipnis, a huge, huge Hawks fan who was in Chicago when you guys won your second cup. What was the conversation like with him? It was awesome, you know, just to be here and be around different pros from other sports and him being a big fan when we were in Chicago. He was actually at the game when we brought the cup on the field there in Wrigley. They played the Cubs, so uh, it was pretty neat to, to exchange some words with him. Oh, he just came up with a big uh, RBI hit. Did you help him with anything in that situation? Uh, they, they said I brought him some luck, so hopefully it's true. All right, getting traded over from a team that's won two Stanley Cups. You're going to a Blue Jackets team that was hot at the end of the year, a lot of young talent. Does it have to change your game at all? No, no, I just want to come in here and be myself. They got a great young team with a lot of skill and, and a lot of leadership already, so I'm looking forward to being a part of a good group. Growing up in Pittsburgh, what was your favorite team and what was your favorite sport? Uh, the Steelers and the Pens are both up there, and uh, probably more the Steelers being being from Pittsburgh. It was a big uh, football town, so I watched them a lot. All right, I shouldn't have asked you that question because you know we're in Cleveland, right? And <laughs> Uh, last thing, uh, how, how ready are you to get the season underway and be with the new team? I'm real excited. You know, I've been home training, getting on the ice now, and uh, really looking forward to heading and, and meeting the guys in Columbus. All right, season starts on October 9th. You guys are at home versus the Rangers. Uh, we'll be watching here on Fox Sports Ohio. Uh, good luck this season, and if you ever need some batting tips, I think I know. Did you talk Kipnis into being a Blue Jackets fan? Yeah, he said he's going to make it out to a game. He's, uh, he was a Chicago fan, but he's rooting for the Jackets now. All right, we appreciate it, Brandon. Welcome to Ohio. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, back to you, Matt. I think I'm going to get us some hockey gear <laughs> from Brandon up here. You need it. <laughs> Here's a line drive to left field, and Michael Brantley makes a chest-high catch off the bat of Logan Schaefer for out number one. That's kind of cool, though, Rick. I mean, you, you think about hockey players in general, and obviously with the European invasion 20 years ago or so, you had a lot of guys from all over the world, but primarily you think Canadians. Here's a guy from Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's right. Making it to the NHL, winning a cup with the Blackhawks. And he threw a nice pitch, a nice little breaking ball right there. And, of course, Jason Kipnis, who's a Chicago native, was he was like a little kid when we were in Chicago and the Blackhawks won the cup that night. We got rained out against the Cubs at Wrigley, and the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup that night. Well, they... Three runs they put on the board brings Anderson back. That's what they did yesterday, too, after, you know, Josh Tomlin gave up a run. They come back and they scored instantly. So that that takes that momentum away. But these Brewers coming into this inning, out of the 42 pitches Anderson has thrown, they swung 21 times, and they're right back out of the chute swinging again. 0-2 the count on Scooter Jeanette, who struck out swinging back in the first. out of play and just like that the rain has stopped by the way uh, just to wrap up on the uh, the note on the blue jackets with, with brandon sod being here they they're now the big league club for the lake erie monsters oh okay nice makes sense a little pipeline yeah makes Cleveland sense. columbus here's the o2 popped him up infield third baseman ramirez called off by lindor Two down. And that'll bring up Jonathan Lucroy. And that's, hey, it's always the starting pitcher's job to get his team back in the dugout quickly. But you, when you've got a pitcher, sort of like a, to use a boxing analogy, Jimmy Nelson's on the ropes right now. You want to get right back up there if you're the Indians yeah, offense. Yeah, that's true. Get in as quickly as possible and make them uh, continue to work. He really struggled that last inning. Strike to the outside corner. Anderson struck out three straight Brewers in the second after the home run by Chris Davis. Popped him up. Well, it's tough to see in the clouds. Lindor makes the grab, and on eight pitches, Cody Anderson cruises through the third.
Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Three-one, Indians on top, bottom of the third, and for the Tribe, Carlos Santana to lead it off. Santana bounced into a double play that ended the first inning. But the Indians didn't let up. They put the pressure on Jimmy Nelson in the second, even with two outs. Yeah, that's when the damage uh, came about. Two out, nobody on. I guess for Jimmy Nelson, it was kind of a foregone conclusion that he was going to be a good athlete. His dad played football at the University of Florida. His mom played basketball at Florida State. Wow. Didn't you say he was from Bama? Oh, that's where he went to college. Oh, he went to college. Yeah. Okay. He grew up in Florida, though. And at 6'6", 250 pounds, I'm guessing his dad must have been a, well, a lineman. He was a shot putter and a discus guy on the track team. Swung out and missed Santana in the hole 0-2. Granted, the condition's not exactly ideal, but he does not look like the same pitcher who's been towing a rubber for Milwaukee over the last couple of months, well, given no. the role that he was on. There you go. He comes right back and gets Santana. Well, that was 96, mid-90s, and he blew it right by him. Take a look on our Nissan pitch tracker. Santana swung underneath that ball. That ball had a little movement going away. Told you his last 11 starts, he was 7 and 1. His ERA, 239. He had a string in there where, you know, 25 and two thirds innings without allowing an earned run. That's hit hard. Deep left. Back is Davis on the track at the wall. Won't get it. It hit right off the built in out of town scoreboard portion of that wall in left field, and Lonnie Chisinau has a one out double. Second double of the night. Kipnis hit one with the bases loaded. And Lonnie went down and hit that ball nicely and stayed on it and take it the other way. Goes high off the wall, and that's what you have to do. If the left fielder goes for it, there's a center fielder. You've got to come over and back up. Play the rebound. Similar to Boston when we were there, only that Boston wall is a lot closer than that one is out there. Now, now, Jan Gomes, who grounded out last inning. Looks at ball one outside. You know, this run that Nelson's been on that you talked about, not like he was beaten up against the also runs. He did this against the Dodgers, the Pirates, the Cubs, right? Yeah. There's three of the best offenses yeah. in the National League. That's right. Hit hard, but foul by Jan Gomes into the seats and back onto the field. Now, this is a category that Jan has really struggled with this year as runners in scoring position. He's just 10 for 67 this year. And that's one where, you know, you thought coming in the kind of year he had offensively, and I know he was injured early, but you thought he would be in a better place mentally to drive in runs. And it seems like he's just so aggressive when he gets into situations to try and drive in a run instead of being patient and let the pitcher come to him. That's what I see. He seems see, to have... I mean, uh, he takes a swing right there, and then he gets upset with himself if he doesn't put in play. He seems to have a little Matt Williams in him. You know, you remember when Matt yeah. Williams only spent one year here, but, boy, in 1997, if he didn't do what he thought he should do, done, right. he would just beat himself up. Well, I could see it. After that swing there, and I've watched him, you know, when he hits a ball, it could be a base hit. They make a nice play. He really, I mean, he shows his emotions, or he wears his heart on his sleeve. Well, the runner at second and one out, the one-two pitch to Gomes. 
Slowly chopped. It's going to be a tough play for Herrera. Scoops, fires, got him. Nicely done by the Milwaukee third baseman, and I think the key there is that he went with the glove. You try to yeah. barehand that on a slick field, and maybe that doesn't work out no, well. No, I, I agree. Even if you don't get him, you have to go with the glove because if you go barehanded, it's awfully tough. He, he could still get rid of it. And then again, you have to know who's running. That was your catcher hitting, so you're going to have that extra time. It's not like you had a speedster running down there. Abraham Almonte singled and scored in the second. That was interesting. Took a strike. Chisinau was not breaking at third. Well, with two outs, he's not expecting That's the element of surprise what El Monte's doing there. It gets away. Here comes Chisholm Hall safe. And the Indians lead it 4-1 to one now on the wild pitch. That's a good read. He made the decision early, and he, he, was ena he enabled him to keep coming without having to stop. And by the time that Nelson could get there, nothing you could do. See, a great read, great jump. That's what made him beat the play. You have to anticipate that to beat it, and he certainly did. And he beats the pitcher to the plate. So a very heads-up play on the wild pitch, his 11th of the year. It's a good read. One ball, one strike count for Almonte. Chased one up high. The one, two. Down on the dirt. Well, he's giving Lucroy a workout here in the early going. Lucroy has been all over the place. He's he's covered more ground in the hockey goal he does, and I mean, he almost <laughs> caught it in the neck too, like they do. <laughs> that can't be fun when you're back there. No, he's had five or six balls down in front of home plate like that. The two-two. Checked his swing. Well, and remember, Rick, it was early that the one might have been the first ball that was in the dirt. He didn't get a piece of it. It hit the umpire. Right. In the shoulder. That's right. <laughs> I think both those guys behind the plate are a little <laughs> afraid. The 3 2. And Almonte fouls it back. You see Jimmy Nelson already over 60 pitches with two outs here in the third inning. Almonte draws the walk. That's already five walks issued by Nelson in two and two-thirds innings. Well, it's a triple play Friday night when the Tribe hosts the Angels. Fans can enjoy a $2 pregame beer in the district, dollar dogs, and postgame fireworks show, which is presented by Wayside Furniture. That'll all take place Friday night. Just visit Indians.com for your tickets. He's only made 15 pitches in the inning. It, it just seems like more than that. This is the third time this year he has walked five guys, and it's the most. It ties him. This is the third time he's done it. That's a lot of pitches. Boy, it's tough to pitch deep into a game when you're all over the place and you're averaging over 20 pitches an inning. And so this is now back-to-back -back nights where Milwaukee has watched 
two starters go out and not look anything like the guy that they've been watching. Well, I know. Willie Peralta is their number one guy. I mean, he won 17 games last year. You looked at him last night, and it was he, he wasn't even close to throwing strikes. This guy has been on a roll. We, we told you a number of times, 7-1 and one in his last 11. And he is all over the place. In his last start against Washington, five and a third innings, five hits, just two runs. But he only had two walks, and that was 102 pitches and five and a third. He's going to be there maybe next inning. Two balls and no strikes. Remember, in that second inning when the Indians made him really work and they scored their three runs, he had two outs and nobody on. It was a broken bat by Almonte that got it rolling. He walked Sands. He thought he had him struck out, started to walk off the mound, and then couldn't throw another strike. Almost had him picked at first. Almonte was spinning his wheels. Look at the mud caked in the bottom of his spikes. See, that's what I'm saying. It's tough to run right now because you need some of that diamond dust. They could run on him. They want to run on him, but the track just doesn't dictate it. You're right. He lost traction. It's like slicks out there. No tread on the tires. <laughs> yeah, now you just take your step where you know you can take one and go back. It's just not conducive to running. And I'll tell you what, you get down there second base, you're going to slide and you're going to get stuck. Well, he already has got himself a pretty dirty uniform. That's all right. Marty will take care of it. Tony, they... 2-0 fouled back. They're going to need some extra strength detergent tonight. Yeah, a couple of, yeah they're <laughs> going to need a couple of gallons of the spray they put on them. Or they might just tr- they might just throw these out tonight. You know the heck with it. Well, an off day tomorrow. <laughs> Frankie's going to have to stay here a little extra. Overtime, huh? Yeah. They don't clean themselves. Never have. 2-1 pitch. Upstairs, three balls and a strike. Well, there you see pretty evenly split right there. That's no fun as a manager sitting there watching that when you know your guy's been pitching. He's much better than what he's showing right now. You know, you take into consideration... You know, on the road in his 13 starts, he's six and six with a 391 and four HR, four homers. But at home, they pitch indoors. It's a it's a controlled environment. It's the same thing. You know that they know they're going to get yeah. this the, this environment right here. I don't I don't know anybody that likes it. Who wants to pitch into the you know under these conditions? Almonte will take off, and the three two did he go? No. Another walk for Nelson. Okay, that's now a season high. Able to check his swing. He's walked two in each of the first three innings now in the game. And Jose Ramirez will be the batter. He walked and scored last inning. You know, the Indians lead the league in that category, drawing walks. They have 434 now as a team. And, and two of the walks have scored. Just this now point. getting some action in the Milwaukee bullpen. Ramirez lifts one to left. Davis back. Makes the catch. Indians tack on a run through three. They lead it four to one.
complete it. Everybody's got the rain gear on because it's been just a goofy night. It's been raining off and on, mostly on, since the game started. Though as we come back from break, for the moment, the rain has stopped. Folks down in the district, they're chilling. Yeah, you can see the lights from there. Fouled back by Ryan Braun, who walked his only time up. Cody Anderson came out and threw just eight pitches to get through the third inning. Well, and you see what happened. He was able to get his team back in there, and they found another way to score one. Watch out. That ball was scorched, and Jason Kipnis able to grab it for out number one. <laughs> you talk about the line drive. You cannot hit a ball any harder than that on the line. I mean, that gets through. Look, you got the pitcher jumping for that ball. You got Kibnis saying, holy smokes. Yeah. Let me get out of the way. You catch it. <laughs> that ball was scorched. And with one down, Adam Lynn, the batter. Lynn hit a comebacker to the bound in the first. Takes outside, ball one. Sounded like he might have broke his bat. Sure did. And Sands will flip it over. Two down. Chris Davis coming to the plate. You see the Indians have their bullpen busy. Not sure what the pitch count for Cody Anderson is in terms of you know whether where they want to keep him tonight, but obviously he's getting close to whatever it is. Swing and a miss. Davis got a hold of a fastball. His last time up, it's the only hit for the Brewers. Laid off. One and two. Let's get on to Andre. Hey, guys. Uh, when you look at, at Cody Anderson right now, I would say probably about 75 pitches would probably be his pitch limit. He was going to go four innings in Lake County, but Tito Francona said, look, he didn't want him to use all his bullets up in the minors. So since he hasn't pitched in a couple weeks, I'd say about 75, 80 would most likely be the number we're looking at tonight. Okay. Well, yeah, you got that bullpen warm, so we weren't sure. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Popped him up. Might be playable here. Gomes to the on-deck circle. He's got it. Cody Anderson on just 10 pitches retires the Brew Crew here in the fourth. 12 in a row set down by the Tribe right-hander.
tweet your strongest fan photo use, uh, uh, to us using the hashtag STODatastrongFan for a chance to have one of your photos shown during our an upcoming telecast this year. It's all courtesy of T-Mobile. Just as we went to break, I think I said Cody Anderson retired 12 in a row. Nine straight he has uh, retired. Well, you may be acting like Kreskin here tonight. <laughs> Since the home run by Chris Davis that led off the second inning. Meanwhile, Jimmy Nelson comes back here to start the fourth. And so far, Rick, Milwaukee's starting pitchers in the two games of the series have gone five and two-thirds. They've allowed... Eight runs on ten hits and eight walks. Yeah, he's right at the uh, 69 pitch uh, count. 69 pitches so far, and it's just after three innings. So really has had his work. A season high six walks. He struck out three. Has a wild pitch where the Indians score to run on. Jason Kipnis delivered the big base hit in the second inning. Bases loaded, two RBI double, and then with the error, they scored another one where Ramirez was able to score from first base. And you're getting at the, uh, a real key that I wanted to bring up. Before the All-Star break, the Indians' offense averaged fewer than four runs per ball game. Big reason, they hit 230 with runners in scoring position. Since the All-Star break, they're averaging more than four runs per ball game and that runners in scoring position average is up 30 per points. They're hitting 260. Is it like four and a half runs per game or, or not quite? Let's just say over four <laughs> and, and less than four. They were averaging 3.9 okay. before the break. They're at okay. 4.2 now. But, you know, when, when your your team is based on pitching, you that know. That could be all the difference a, a in the half world. Half a run, not even a half a run a game, sometimes m makes a huge difference. Kipnis out on strikes here to start the bottom of the fourth. But he had the key, two out, two run, double in the second. Arkea in the driver's seat. Shows you that Francisco Lindor, since the All-Star break, has been on fire. And uh, he's got the best uh, batting average among rookies. Very nice. Travis, the kid with Toronto, he's, not, he's out the rest of the year. Since the All-Star break, Lindor batting 362, which is a big reason why he surged to the top of the... Oh, he's been he's been fun to watch. And both sides of the plate, he's about dead even. But when you look from uh, the left side and the right side, Lindor 307 right-handed, 305 left-handed. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And, I mean, he hits... He's got a little sock in that bat. For, you know, before coming up, we all heard, oh, the kid's ready defensively. He can play, which he can. But I'll tell you what, he's he's ready offensively, too. We never heard that. Mm -mm. Now, look, the, they will make adjustments on him. No question about it. That's the toughest thing once you get here, but you're going to have to learn to stay. But he's making it look easier. As the, the more he stays. The thing about Francisco Lindor, and you don't have to be around him long. See, if and he you starts don't have that to, too, patience. You Go don't ahead. have to watch much to figure this out. He's a driven athlete. If you find me an, an athlete who has the drive yeah. to want to be really great. good, to be great. No, to be great. Then you got something that you, you can't predict. Right. Well, he's maybe this, he's maybe that. you you got you to give no him the opportunity. to yeah. somebody like that with drive. You give him the challenge, and, and he's going to meet it. Well, he's been on all three times tonight, two by walks. If he takes walks and doesn't try and get too aggressive, the kid's going to be really good. You know, it's funny you say that because I talked to uh, a scout that looked at the Cubs and the Cardinals are his two teams that he looks at, and he has the major league and minor leagues. And Schwarber had just made his appearance here, the kid that's going to be a catcher for the Cubs that right. they called up. And he said, I said, is this kid going to be able to catch? And this scout was a catcher. And he said, you know what? I think so because this kid, his desire, 90% mental, he knows he, he's going to make it because he wants to make it. 
And he says that's why he's going to be a good catcher at the major league level because he has that desire and that drive. Well, he's not catching every day, but it's still early. Give him yeah. time because they got Montero there who's a pretty darn good catcher. But his bat translates into, into uh, you know, you got to play the kid. Lindor bluffed to move towards second. Again, the, the footing's not exactly great out no, there. No, it, it's really tough to run in these conditions. You know, going back to what you were saying, I, I, I love I'm, – I'm fascinated and intrigued by scouts who go out and beat the bushes and look at all these kids. And, and I always think about Derek Jeter. You're watching a gangly kid from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yeah. They might have thought he was a good player, but they could have never, never truly known that the – the desire that that guy had. There was one that said he was a can't miss, <laughs> and he retired because they, they never oh, drafted that's him. Right, Al Rosen. Um, uh, no, new, uh, new was it Newhouse? Al, Al Newhouse. Right, that's right. Drafted him and ended up retiring because they wouldn't wouldn't that's pick right. him. Was it Houston? He was yes, with Houston, yes, right? Yes, it was. He thought he was a can't miss. Lindor takes off. And a throw down is not in time. He looked like the road runner as he took off from first base. His feet were chopping 100 miles an hour, but he wasn't going anywhere at first. Well, you, you have to shorten your lead, but you have to run on top of that mud. You can't dig down. you got to have soft feet. You can't be a, a Clydesdale and get through that mud. you got to run on top of it. And he did. The fourth stolen base now for the Indians. Uh, there's an art to it. I mean, it's not that easy. You, you, if you're heavy-footed and run on that, you're not you're not going to go anywhere. And again, you say it, it, it's tough because that that mud builds up in your cleats, and, and you know there's just no traction for it. It's like not even having the cleats on. But uh, the Indians had their game plan set. If this is a dry field. They have four stolen bases. They have, they may have more than that with the way this guy delivers the baseball to home plate in the time that he delivers it to his catcher. You feel sorry for Lucroy because he's back there fielding balls in the dirt. He's diving for balls. They've got guys running on him. He has, he is having a tough night tonight. The seven walks issued by Jimmy Nelson are a season high for Milwaukee. Matt Garza had walked six in a game earlier this year, but that's nobody's walked seven until tonight. Down and in, and now it's eight. Wow. He's walked two in every inning. At least he's consistent, and that's going to be it. Craig Council is going to go to his bullpen with only one out in the fourth inning after Willie Peralta couldn't get through the third inning last night. So Jimmy Nelson goes three and third. He will exit. And Craig Council will make the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen with two on, both via the walk here in the fourth inning. Disappointing night for Nelson because, as Rick told you earlier, he had been on a tremendous roll. And, you know, consistently going out, giving his team a chance to win. Tonight, he, he just didn't have it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you can say the weather, the conditions were part of it, but. Well, you know. whatever it is, I mean, he was not good tonight. And I'm sure he'll be the first to tell you. All right, so while we wait for the new pitcher, let's send it down to Andre Nott. Uh, I appreciate you guys throwing it down to me. Today is a special day for one. Mr. Hamilton sitting next to you, Matt. 19 years ago today in our Miller Lite moment of the game, somebody came up to bat with the game on the line. As a matter of fact, this is John Farrell's second start all time. How about that? I bet people didn't know this. He's making his second start with the Cleveland Indians. Well, Paul Molitor was on deck with a 39-game hit streak on the line, and look who comes through in the clutch. <laughs> our man Arch comes through with the game-winning hit. And Arch, the best part about this is that you've told me, you got booed at home for getting the game when he yeah, hit. I did. It was a one nothing game. Sure did. That was uh, Molitor was on deck. That's why. Now I was told Molitor kept the ball in the infield that entire game. It was a bad weather game, somewhat like today. 
It was never bad weather when you had a chance to play. <laughs> you know what happened? He was 0 for 4. I mean, it was nine innings. That hit was in the 10th inning, and it came off Doug Jones. John Farrell started that game for the Indians, and, you know, he was making his, uh, you know, first year starting up. He did a terrific job holding them down to, to – in four at bats. But Andre, if you watch that video, did you notice who the first guy was to get yeah. down to Arch? It was Paul Mahler. Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. that was, that's a winner right there because Mahler went right down there to give him a. Yeah. Did he, what did he say to you, Arch? He said, Thank God it's over. Yeah. You really? know, because uh, it's, he's the first one that came up. He said, Way to go. Thank God it's over. We won the game. That's the bottom line. You know, it was a one nothing ball game, and uh, and I stopped it. I never threw a pitch in my life for a ball or a strike, and I stopped a hitter hit straight. That sums you know, up your over. career pretty well. Yeah, though. no kidding. You get booed, Andre. Would you expect any more of that from me? That's Come why on. I love you. But look, 1987. So, you know, TV's getting a little bigger. Media's getting oh, a little yeah. bigger. Yeah, it was. He had to deal with more than even Pete Rose hit, who had uh, done it nine years earlier. Well, it was Nightline that used to cover him, and he would only do one press conference every day to, to, to get all that media. If it was nowadays, it would be a zoo. Well, that tells you this is the longest one. I mean, when you look at the longest hit streaks, no one's gotten close to that. Yeah. And that was 19. That's amazing. But 19. It's 28. 28. I'm 20. I'm trying go. to not age it's you. It's 2 8, man. Let's go. 2 8. <laughs> you look good. You're not good in math. I don't have to be. I, you got to start working with you. You told me college wasn't. <laughs> I, it's not. I, I knew what you meant when you said 19, though. <laughs> See? I know how to count to three. Three strikes and three outs. Oh, boy. All right. Tyler Thornburg, the new pitcher, dealing up high ball one to Carlos Santana. Santana takes a strike, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. What did Sandy get to, 30? He got to 30, 31, I think. Yeah. Right around the All-Star break in 97. It was, I was going to say that had to be his year, 1997. Yeah. I believe it was a 30-gamer. Followed back. I remember asking Tony Gwynn about it at the All-Star game that year. Yeah. When everybody was here asking about Sandy. You know, you, know, you get to that games. level, and that's when everybody starts really, I mean, really paying attention to every at-bat. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's crazy. You get to 20, and every at-bat shown on some station yeah. or something. But it, it's so different. But when you get to 30, that, that means something. Because I remember watching Rose go through his 44-gamer. Santana smokes it to center field, but it stays up for Logan Schaefer. And that is out number two. Boy, he barreled that baby up. And he has nothing to show for it. Two down. And up comes Lonnie Chisenhall. We talk about records that will never be broken. Now, feasibly, somebody could hit in 57 straight games. Yeah, well, sure, anything can happen. But, you can never say never, but oof. I'm going to tell you something right now. It, nowadays... You would certainly think that 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 will never be broken. I I, I don't think so. Not with the – you face three or four different pitchers nowadays. You're not facing the same yeah. pitcher three or four times. There's so many factors that go into it. But, I mean, there are some records where we can say, look, no one's ever going to – for example, I don't know what the all-time record, but Bob Feller, 36 complete games. Oh, no one's ever going to do that again I mean, in one year. start 36 games. <laughs> so how right. do you complete what you don't start? <laughs> you know what I mean? That would, yeah, things like that, it's it's crazy. Ted Williams, you think about somebody it. could feasibly hit over 400, 400. but good I've luck. I've seen a couple guys come really close, Carew, Brett, yeah. and some players, and boy, what a, I mean, I'm talking into September, yeah. and it just, it just doesn't happen. The 0-2, and we've talked about it numerous times as to why it could be more difficult. I mean, Every guy coming out of a bullpen is a specialist and throwing mid nineties with some it kind of certainly nasty doesn't secondary. help. Yeah, and now you're not playing the same league, the same teams. You're playing everybody in baseball. Yeah, you know, interleague and things like that. So it's different. So many factors because now it's a specialization. You know, with the, you used to play the same teams. It was a national league, and no Amer you know, American, no interleague play, and you got to know the the, the guys you were facing and. You make adjustments, and I can see where you could maybe do it a little easier now because when you see in our division, when you're facing very good pitchers, let's say somebody faces Kluber and they have a good history off him, you know they have to have a track record on him to hit him well because he's yeah. so tough to hit. 
What about Nolan Ryan? 5,000 strikeouts? That, that, you wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. Who's, who's going to ever pitch long enough? Right, to who's going to pitch long enough? And you know what? They don't let them pitch deep right. into games anymore. You can't go in and, and throw 160 pitches anymore. One-two pitch. Lonnie lines it in the right field, a base hit. Lindor coming around third. He'll be waved home. Santana's throw cut off. 5-1 Cleveland. Chisenhall, two for three. As an RBI is 31st on the year, and Lonnie is absolutely locked in at the plate. He's yeah. got an eight-game hitting streak, and that gives him 11 hits in his last 23 at-bats. Well, here he goes. He, he hit a fastball his first time. Now he gets a breaking ball. He likes that off-speed pitch. The fastball he drove to left center was down and away. He stayed on it. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. So there goes another walk to come around and score from Nelson. That'll go on his docket. Jan Gomes, 0 for 2 tonight, takes a strike. Pretty good fastball, and when you elevate it, it's a tough one to hit. And for Gomes, he's a guy that likes the ball from the belt down. Ten out of 12 pitches for strikes from Thornburg. That one missed inside, though. But here, so far, Indians offensively, a lot like last night. They get the early lead, and then they keep adding to it, keep the pressure on. Three in the second. They added a run in the third. They've added another here in the fourth. Up high. And again, something that was missing throughout much of the first half of the season, the big two-out hit with runners in scoring position. Kipnis. Has a two-out, two-run double tonight. And now Lonnie Chisnall with a two-out RBI single. Strike three called, ends the inning. But we've played four in Cleveland with the Indians in front now. Five to one. By the Cleveland Clinic. Call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150. The future is tough. Five-one. Indians rolling tonight as we head now to the fifth inning. Domingo Santana 
Elian Herrera and Gene Segura do up for Milwaukee. Cody Anderson. Thanks. Okay, has mowed down nine straight. Swings at a breaking ball and fouls it over toward the dugout. Hit in the air to deep center field. Almonte back on the track at the wall, and it's going to be caught by Chisenhall. Well, he had it the whole time. Well, you know, you watch one guy going after it, and you don't realize where the other guy's yeah. playing, and he had it under control. I was kind of fixed on Almonte. I never really I saw Lonnie until the end. That's what happens. You see one guy busting it to get over there, and you don't realize where the other one's playing, and he has it because he started in right center, and he was running like a madman over there to try and get it. And Chisinau had it all the way. Santana's got good opposite field power. We saw it last night. Elian Herrera struck out his only time up in the second. Well, Rick, we haven't seen a, a different Cody Anderson. Maybe uh, a little better in terms of just commanding the baseball. But, you know, let's take into consideration now he's, he's been off for, what, almost a month, three weeks to a month. So he's going to have a little extra adrenaline built up like your first start. He's not a veteran, you know, so he's going to come back and want to show and prove that he's ready to go again. But he, he settled in. The only hit allowed was the home run by Davis. He walked Braun with two outs in the first. It's the only base runners tonight for Milwaukee. Uh, perfect. I mean, it was truly night and day for Cody Anderson. His first four starts compared to his last four starts. I mean, his first four starts, he was 2-1 and one with an ERA that was 0.89. Well, and in his was, last four starts, he was 0-2 with an ERA of over 10. Well, you know, that's a, a byproduct also. He, he faced Tampa his first two starts. Offensively, they're not a, a big offensive team. He came up and he pitched well against Pittsburgh. Now they are. And then he, he pitched well against Houston, and he made his pitches. But then Milwaukee's the one that started him on a slide. Kansas City got him, an, another good offensive club. Oakland, he didn't pitch poorly because, remember, he was home back then, and he had a crowd of about 60 people out there. But, you know, he gave up six runs in that game. Oh, no, I'm sorry, four runs. Three of them earned and left trailing four to one. That was a loss, and then Minnesota really hurt him in two and a third. So he faced some better offensive clubs in those last four starts. Well, Tommy Bolt points out that, you know, last night you look at Josh Tomlin, right? He gave up the home run in the top of the second inning to Domingo Santana and then retired the next 12 in a row. Tonight, Cody Anderson gives up the home run to Chris Davis and retires the next 10 in a row. Yeah, that's the, you, like settle, the, you know what? There's nothing no? wrong with solo home runs. That's, for, that's, that's from throwing strikes. Tomlin's a strike thrower. This guy's a strike thrower. You're going to give up home runs. A solo home run, so what? They get a base hit, let's go, move on. It's not a rally. They don't string three, four, five hits together. That's where you get hit out of a ball game, and you're not walking people. And that's what happened to Cody right. before he went on the DL. Right. He was letting innings get away from him. Uh huh. Just like a lot of young pitchers do. But as a manager, you'd rather see him throwing strikes, and if they're going to make contact, you're going to have to make an adjustment sooner or later. You know, they've got some things to work on with this kid. They'd love to teach him a little breaking ball to go with his fastball and change up but in due time. It all doesn't come, you know, within starts. Just making his first major league start this year, I think he shocked everybody, including them, how well he pitched. 
because what didn't he? He pitched what over seven innings in his first four starts. He never pitched seven in the minor, minor leagues. leagues, right? Well, not every guy gets here with a perfect four pitch mix and right. you know, finished product. No, it, right? And even the guys who get here with really good stuff, how many times have we heard? Well, now I'm working on this. Now I'm tinkering with this. Well, you know? and also. After the first four starts, they had video on him, and other teams were watching him before they faced him, and they saw he threw a lot of strikes. So they, they made a, a change. They went out and got aggressive. And a piece stays alive, does Gene Segura. You know, you go out, you learn. You learn every time when you go out and pitch or play when you're a rookie. The 3-2 is chopped off the plate. Going to be tough for anybody. Lindor's got it. Flips it. Low. Gets away. And Jerry Sands, by the time he recovers, Herrera is down at third base. Well, that's going to be a base hit, I'm sure, and an error because he handcuffed Sands at first with that throw. So a single and an error on the low throw allowing... Herrera to go to third. See, he had a tough time getting it out. He was going to beat it up, and that's a, just a tough play. He really threw something really hard at Sands because he couldn't get it out, and it wasn't accurate, so Sands couldn't help him out and pick it. So it gets by. So it'll be a base hit and an error, and that's going to do it. So for... we got a timeout. Yeah, Cody Anderson, a short night, four and a third. But first start since coming off the DL, he's been out couple of weeks so we got a timeout with a new pitcher coming in it's the left-hander Kyle Crockett when we come back Cody Anderson takes a seat. He'll watch the bullpen take over from here. Lefty lefty batch up Logan Schaefer line to left his only time up.
Up and away. Two balls and a strike. Kyle Crockett is the lone left-hander in the Cleveland bullpen. Hit to right field. Back is Chisenhall. Makes the catch on the warning track. And that's out number two. That was a little bit of a challenging play for Lonnie Chisenhall in that he as he went back, that ball sort of tailed back over his other shoulder, so he had to make a quick maneuver. Well, he's going to run into plays like that. The more you play out there, the dip, you know, the more balls you see go over your head, or right-handed, left-handed hit them. Left-handed, they'll hook a little more than the right-handers will slice. So you'll learn that. It's going to bring up Scooter Jeanette, who is 0 for 2. And a drag bunt attempt by Jeanette. Milwaukee. Now one on the second, one. And there a strike. One here in the uh, fifth inning. Keeping a close eye on Segura over at first. The Detroit Tigers, who had lost five in a row, are trying to put an end to their slump. They lead the Angels 5 nothing in the sixth inning. And, Rick, what do you make of the Angels' struggles? Well, they were able to win last night, hang on and, and beat Detroit. But, boy, they have gone south. Verlander is no hitting them through six. Well, it's been, it's been a little of both, offense and pitching. We'll get a chance to see them Friday for the weekend, their only trip here into Cleveland. Yeah, they're going to have to regroup. As you say, still a lot of baseball to be played. Well, it's going to come down to that last month when everybody gets into their own division. You're going to have to take care of your own business. And in a way, ouch. Oh, almost hit him. It sure did. <laughs> that was a swing out of self-defense maybe more than anything else. Well, watch Jeanette. This ball is bearing in on him. <laughs> oh. He would have been wearing it for a necktie if he didn't hit it. I'll tell you what, that thing, that was in. It would have hit him if he didn't put the bat on the ball. Ah, throw to first, and Segura back again. Missed outside, two and two. Him. Well, full count, I'm sorry. 3-2. Full count. The runner at first, Segura, now will be off on this 3-2 pitch. 
I was looking out on the bullpen. The Indians have uh, action oh, out yeah. there, so I'm, this is probably it for Crockett. I totally agree. He came on. He had the two left-handers in this situation. If he doesn't get them, I would certainly think he's going to go to Manship. Runner goes. Payoff pitch right back up the middle and into center field. So, two on, two out. Well, let's see Terry. Here he comes. You knew that was uh, that was going to be the case. So we've got a timeout. Third pitcher of the inning when we come back. Making his warm-up tosses, and we'll go back to the studios right now for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulowski. Hey, Matt. Hey, Rick. Blue Jays and Rangers tonight. David Price on the hill for Toronto, and Adrian Beltre greets him in the bottom of the first with a two-run homer, his 12th of the year. Toronto comes back and ties it. So Blue Jays and Rangers even at two now, fourth inning in Arlington, guys. All right. Thanks, Al. That's a... An interesting race in both the East and the West. You got the Blue Jays who began the night with a game lead over the Yankees. Actually a game and a half because New York lost again to Houston. And Houston began the night because of that win with a five-game edge over Texas. Here, Milwaukee's trying to claw their way back in. They're down 5-2 now. The error helping them to get a run in. And then Kyle Crockett gives up the two-out single to keep the inning alive. Now Jonathan Lucroy with two outs. And Jeff Manship misses ball one up high. Good off-speed pitch. Dropped over the outside corner. Luke Roy flying to right in the first. Popped up on the infield in the third. And now with two on, two out. The 1-1 pitch from Manship. Did he go? Yeah. Yes, he did, says he first sure base did. umpire Chris Siegel. And it's one and two. That's the side look. You can see he certainly did go.
Oh, Way yeah. outside. He almost went. Did he go? Yes. He did. Yes, sir. And that will end the inning. Lucroy really expanding his strike zone. Brewers get a run closer. 5-2 after the middle of the fifth. Get your Jan Gome jersey, courtesy of Sherwin Williams. That'll take place Saturday. Indians will take on the Angels. Enjoy a post-game fireworks show presented by Brilliant Electric Sign Company. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Abraham Almonte, he's driving one toward the gap. It'll be cut off. But he has himself second hit of the night, third time he's reached safely. Here's our in-game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Chris Davis started it with a solo shot in the second for Milwaukee. Indians immediately responded. A two-out, two-run double for Jason Kipnis. Another run would score on the little misplay and left by Davis. And then the Indians would add on. Lonnie Chisnall with another two-out RBI knock. It's now 5-2 in the bottom of the fifth. Jerry Sands, two walks, and he has scored a run. Upstairs with it, 2-0. Oh. Strike is called two and one. Tyler Thornburg came on on the fourth, got the final two outs, but he also did give up an RBI single before the inning came to a close. It's one of those games again. It seems like the Indians are up by more than just three runs. Yes, it does.
Well, when you figure you have, what was it, seven or eight walks? Eight walks. In the game. Where was that game? New York, they had ten walks, and I don't think one of them scored. Three have scored today out of the eight walks. But usually when you when you get that many walks, you take advantage of it. You can, you can deliver a knockout punch. They haven't been able to do that. Jerry Sands down on strikes, one away. Jose Ramirez walked and scored in the second. He flied the left in the third. Pitches outside for a strike, outside corner for a strike. Over the outside corner. And two quick strikes on Ramirez. A little bit outside. Al just gave us the update on that Texas-Toronto game. Last night, the Blue Jays scored twice in the top of the ninth. And 42-year-old LaTroy Hawkins got the win. 20-year-old Roberto Osuna pitched the bottom of the ninth to get the save. He's what? The, he's perfect in his save, or either that or he's blown one. The 22-year age difference between Hawkins and Osuna was the largest between a winning and a saving pitcher since June 30th, 1987, when our boy Scotty Bales was 24 and got a save for 48-year-old Phil, Phil Necro. I figure Scotty he might be in town this week. He is. He is? Bales came into a bases-loaded two-out jam in the ninth, he gave up an RBI single to 37-year-old pinch hitter George Hendrick <laughs> and then punched out Butch Weininger to end the game. Oh, beautiful. He told me nobody covered the outer half better than George Hendrick of all the guys he ever faced. 2-2 pitch, runner goes, and a shot foul. Not by much. No, it did not miss by much. Okay, going down that third baseline, take a look at it. That umpire, his feet got a little happy. Tim Timmons down there was putting on his dancing shoes, but he saw it was going to be foul. That note on the uh, age gap came to us from Elias, courtesy of Mike Pachta. But uh, that was the 317th win for Phil Necro in his Hall of Fame career. He would get one more before it was all okay. said and done. But, he, Rick, he's 48 years old. Now, I know he's throwing a knuckleball. 48 years old. He went eight and two-thirds. Of course. And got the win. Latroy Hawkins comes in and vultures the win. I mean, that's not the same <laughs> thing. Uh, love Latroy. All no, respect but, to him know, in like, the world. You but. come in there with a run down <laughs> with that Toronto team. If you're in a bullpen, you're going to get wins if you just get three outs. <laughs> that's true. Like Julian Tavares in 1995. Right. I mean, they're on a team where they have a lot of comeback wins, so that's how he ended up getting it. Now, if he gave up a run and then they scored it, it would be different. I just think it would be, it had to be strange. What we'll have to ask Scott when I see him tomorrow. It had to be strange. To be a 24-year-old kid in the big leagues, and you got a teammate who's Double, twice your yeah. age. It's like, yeah, who's the old guy? Is that a coach? <laughs> no, that's our fifth starter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, think about it. If you could go out there and, and tow the rubber at 48 years old, pitch eight and two-thirds innings, and then continue to get major league hitters out, that's very impressive. Swing and a miss by Kipnis. You know what? Mike Pockta just reminded me. Steve Carlton was part of that same yeah, pitching that staff year. that uh -huh. year. Yes, he was. They had them both. I wasn't here, but I At I, the I very end of his yeah. career.
Maybe that's why Scotty is like he is. (laughs) (laughs) I hung around with the older crowd. He should have been with the kids his own age. The 0 1. Check, did he go? Yes, Yes, he he did. did. Tim Timmons raising the right hand. And the count 0 and 2. Fastball up. He wanted to hold up. It's hard to do with that fastball up around the letters. Oof. Close. That's the second time a guy from the draw or from uh, Milwaukee walked off the mound mm-hmm. on a pitch right in about the same spot. Luke Roy asking caught. him about it now. The other one was a breaking ball. This one was a fastball. That's a strike. And you know, I, I'm sorry to say, but it's not called tonight. Now a throw to first. Well, and if you're Jason Kipnis up there, you're saying, you know how many times I've been rung up on pitches that weren't strikes, so I I, I deserve no, no, a couple. I, that's nothing against the hitter. If you get it, good for you. Take advantage of it. You're figuring, I'm not taking another one that close, I'll guarantee you. But, you know, the umpire just missed it. It's been a small strike zone tonight, I will say that. You know, there's other times as a hitter, you're right. You feel like there's a pitch this far outside. They ring you up. Man, I'm getting even. Now, Monte taking some time to knock the dirt from his spikes. He's taken off. Now he stopped, and the pitch was way outside. Now, Monte bluffed a move, took a couple of strides. This time, Almonte is going. The ball Uh. bounced in front of the plate. And he's got a stolen base. That's his second of the night. That's their fifth for the Indians. He has two. Lindor has three. Well, this one, again, out in front of the plate. And nothing that uh, Luke Roy could do. This guy has been beat up behind the plate tonight. Ground ball to first. Lynn scoops it, takes it himself, and the inning is over. Five complete. Indians five, Brewers two.
Our great clip of the game from last night, courtesy of Michael Brantley, who had quite a night. Brantley hit not one, but two. Two run home runs against his old club, the Milwaukee Brewers. Kind of, he kind of ruined that uh, graphic we had last night, remember? Early in the game, before he hit that home run, we showed that graphic about guys who had hit 30-plus yeah, doubles right. and That's fewer right. than 10 homers. Yeah, he went to double digits in a hurry, didn't he? <laughs> Jeff Manship got the final out of the fifth. He'll stay on to pitch here in the sixth. First ball swinging popped up by Ryan Braun. Gomes reached over but couldn't get to it. He needed another foot maybe, and he would have had a chance to catch that ball. Take another look here as Gomes gets to it, reaches over. Yeah, just that's a tough angle because you, you can't reach up. He'd have to jump up and go over a la Sandy Alomar years ago on the other side. Smashed his bat. Lindor flips it over. One down. Off day tomorrow, and then the Angels are here for a weekend homestand. Friday night, it'll be Danny Salazar against Andrew Haney. And our coverage begins with Alan Jensen, Indians Live, 6.30. First pitch at 7 right here on Sports Time Ohio. One out for Adam Lynn, who is 0 for 2. He is grounded out twice, takes a strike. the dirt. Not a play. Murph's Baltimore Orioles have <laughs> taken a 6-2 lead over the Royals, powered by Three, Three two-run homers. That's like off Johnny. Chato, yeah. Scope, and Davis. That's off Johnny Cueto for Kansas City. So they're doing some damage. Well, they needed to because they lost six in yeah, a row. Yeah, they've been struggling. Popped up, foul, drifting, out of play. You know, the thing for Baltimore, as bad as it seems, and they've fallen eight games off the pace in the East, but just two and a half out in the wild card. Well, that keeps everybody around the wild card. You know, you, you certainly want to shoot for your division if you have a chance, but for the teams that don't, that second wild card keeps you in play. For example, Cleveland started the night five and a half out in the wild card, even though they're still... Seven below 500. Yeah. Round ball by Lindor, backed up by Kipnis. The throw to first on the money. Two down. Well, grab some friends, catch a game at the new corner bar. It's open to all fans at Progressive Field. It's the $13 district tickets. They are presented by Sports Time Ohio. They're going quickly, so get yours today. Tickets available only at Indians.com. Chris Davis homered in the second. He fouled out to the catcher, Jan Gomes, in the fourth. Misses inside ball one, does Jeff Manship.
Swung on and missed. Good breaking ball by Manship. The Astros beat up the Yankees again today, 6-2 the final. And with that, Rick, Houston's won more games than they did all of last year. How about that? Still have uh, well over a month to go, about five weeks to go in the season. High, towering pop to center. Almonte in. And he hangs on. A 1-2-3-6 for Jeff Manship. 5-2 Cleveland. Milwaukee goes back to their bullpen once again. Corey Knable will be the new pitcher for Milwaukee. 36th appearance of the year, 372 ERA. Only 14 walks against 42 strikeouts. Let's go downstairs to Andre Knott. You know, I heard you guys talking a little bit earlier about Francisco Lindor and just the excitement of not knowing he could hit like this on this level. We heard about his defense. We heard about everything else he could do. And talking to him over the last two or three days, we talked about hitting in between Jason Kipnis and Michael Brantley. And he told me, he goes, look, he goes, I'm going to learn everything I possibly can learn from both of them. He goes, if Kip drives a guy the other way, he goes, that probably means I should drive the ball the other way. We talked about sacrificing. And he says, look, I'm going to do it because Kipnis drives, runs it. He goes, you tell me those stupid stats every day. He goes, I'm not a dummy. And I guess that's the point of what I'm getting at is his intelligence and baseball intelligence has blown me away. And he goes, look, he goes, I'm blessed to hit between Brantley and Kipnis. And he goes, I beg to be in between them. And he goes, I don't want to hit anywhere else the rest of my life. I knew that would be a great spot for him to hit in. Uh, you know, you get between those two hitters and, and, boy, it gets contagious. Thanks a lot, Mr. Lewis. Well, that was funny when I, you know, I'll tell you what, it, it was like when I first got traded over to Milwaukee, I, uh, Harvey Keene says, he called me in and says, you're going to hit second. I was between Molitor and Yount. It's like, oh, my goodness. You know, what a great way to go. Mm -hmm. you, you, get, you get yourself into different uh, positions that are good hitters. Boy, that's the way to go because you do learn a lot. Well, you're going to get a lot of opportunities with a guy on base because Molitor is going to get on base. Well, just like these guys, you get Kibnis on base, hitters, uh, the round good hitters, they, they all hit. And and the young man, they're going to go at Lindor because he's the rookie. They know Michael Brantley can hit. He can hit with runners in scoring position, so they're not going to want to walk him. 
But if he's patient enough up there, that's why I say if he can get a, little, a few walks, he's going to be great. They retire him for the first time tonight in his fourth plate appearance. One down. And up comes Michael Brantley, who they have walked twice tonight, and he has grounded out once. On the move, nice play at second base, but not in time as Brantley beats it out. Scooter Jeanette made a nifty play on a short hop after a couple of balls ate him alive last night. But by the time he got to it, he didn't have enough time to throw out Brantley. That was good effort defensively, but you see Brantley beats it out. Well, you know, as a hitter, you see that ball, you smell a hit, you take off, you put your head down, and you get after it. That ball gets away another ball in the dirt. Jonathan Lucroy, even though the Brewers are traveling tonight, he, he might travel in a bed of ice. No kidding. Yeah, they head back home, but boy, oh boy, another breaking ball in the dirt, and it, it just sort of ricocheted on him and took off the flex. He has really, he, he has knocked a lot of balls down in the dirt, and he's had quite a few of them out in front of home plate. <laughs> There have only been two wild pitches, but that doesn't account for the number of pitches that he's right. been able to knock down and no keep kidding. in front of him. Yes, that, that, that's true. A sky high pop. Holy mackerel. You talk about a rainmaker. And it's caught by the bigger guy, Lynn, two down. Well, I'll tell you, Milwaukee has a lot of work to do on that defense. Soccer Sunday returns this week in the MLS. It's an East Coast rivalry as the New York Red Bulls take on D.C. United. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Sponsored by Audi. Indians looking for their 10th hit in the series with a runner in scoring position. Lonnie Chisnall has been their man to do it. Came up with a two-out RBI knock in the fourth. In the dirt, one and one. Out of play. New York Mets punishing Philly 6-1. They're in the eighth. Washington losing at home to San Diego 6-5. They're in the eighth. Nationals still five and a half back of the Mets in the NL East. New York trying to win their sixth in a row.
Chisholm is rung up to end the inning. Six complete. It remains 5-2 Cleveland. Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Coming up next, Al and Jensen anchor our coverage from the Corner District. They'll have the highlights. As the Indians try to make it six out of seven here at home. Right now it's Zach McAllister. He's on to face the six, seven, and eight hitters for Milwaukee in the seventh. Indians leading it five to two. Domingo Santana takes a strike. A little bit low. Just a bit outside. <laughs> I thought I heard that from about four or five booths <laughs> down. <laughs> Again. Foul back out of play. Well, I know you always enjoy seeing Bob Euchre. Rare opportunities that we play Milwaukee from your time playing oh, with the Brewers. Yeah, he's about as good as they get. He's been around the game and doing Brewers games for 50 years. And that's ball four. McAllister walks the leadoff man. There's Bob Euchre. There he is. Still doing them. Uh, uh, Andre did it from his seat up there in the front row that was way up top when we were in Milwaukee. It was Harry Doyle night when we were in Milwaukee. That's right, yeah. You know, he was on Johnny Carson more than 100 times. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a funny guy. He's got a great personality, and you talk about the Milwaukee Brewers. He's been there yeah. forever. 
There's a line drive base hit to center field. So the first two have reached against McAllister here in the seventh. McAllister's first appearance since the home run at Wrigley Field. Well, there's a fastball right down Broadway, and I'll tell you, this Milwaukee team will get on the heater. They are not bashful. They will jump on that first pitch. McAllister better make a quality pitch. I don't care if you're at the bottom part of their lineup. They can hit the fastball. I don't care if it's 95. Up comes Gene Segura. He is one for two. He had an infield single in the fifth. Brian Shaw starting to loosen for Cleveland. Way outside, ball one. As nice as it is to see Bob Uecker, it was also great to see Carl DeFilippo. Yeah. Better known as DeBage. Right. He, they, they've been buddies for years. DeMage is 91 years old. Yeah. Still drives, still comes to the ballpark. It's still great to see him. In this October, he and his wife will celebrate their 70th, 70th. wedding anniversary. Yeah. He's a fixture. He's a throwback, though, to well, the old days. Absolutely, with Whitey Ford. He, I mean, when you talk yeah. about the Yankees and, and Billy Martin and guys like that. Strike called. He literally goes back to DiMaggio. Yep. That's how he got the nickname. Invited him over to his house, and his mom made spaghetti dinner for him. <laughs> Think about that. Just a guy who loves baseball and has been around the, the right. old stadium and the new ballpark. Right. Forever. Doing anything for anybody. A retired uh, man from the, uh, the railroad. Yeah, he worked 35 years in the railroad, but, I mean, he... He's been around here just doing little odd jobs for anybody that needed anything. Well, you need a ride to the airport. You need a ride here. You need to go to the take the to guys take to the Joe racetrack. Terry, Zimmer to the track. <laughs> you know, George Brett, a lot of the, you know, the old time guys that are, have been around and been a friend to them all. Oh, yeah. But now they're all along the wayside, and he doesn't have a lot of friends. The Euchre is one of the last ones. <laughs> the last of the Mohicans. The one, two is outside. Dimaj used to be very good friends with Franco Harris, you know. Yeah. When the, he'd come to town and stay at his place. So he's done a lot of athletes that have been around the, the area. Now the 2 2. Out of play. They're falling off because, the, you know, his fastball's yet to throw an off-speed pitch. Everything's been a fastball out of his 13 pitches. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out, one away. He got this ball away enough, and with two strikes, made Segura reach for it and elevated enough where he comes up empty. Good pitch. Upstairs with an off-speed pitch to Logan Schaefer. Schaefer lined the left in the third. Drove one to deep right field for a sacrifice fly in the fifth. High fly ball, right field. Over near the line, Lonnie Chisinau. Does he have room? 
He yep. makes the catch run up against the railing. Strong throw to third, but a little bit offline. And there are two down in the inning as Santana scampered over to third base. Well, it just stayed in play long enough for Lonnie to get over there and make the catch right at the railing. Did you see what he did? There you go. What? Took his eye off the ball, looked for peek. the railing, yeah. and then picked it back up again. Yeah, he had time to get over there. He, that ball uh, nicked the Lindor's glove, I think, uh, which sent it offline a little more. But that was up there high enough. It gave him time to take his eye off of it and, and take a peek to see where he was at. Made a nice play for the second out. Well, with two down, Scooter Jeanette, the batter. He's one for three on the night. Out of play. Jeanette one for seven in the series. Foul back. Now McAllister, one strike away from getting out of the inning unscathed. No balls and two strikes. Just missed inside. Another foul back. <laughs> the guy thought about trying to catch that ball in the suite and it hit the chair behind him. It was he went. Oops. Yeah, no. What am I doing? Right? Too, realized it was coming just a bit too hard. Plus, it's not not it's not that it's cold. It, it's it's a little damp chill. though. Tonight. Yeah, it is. It's damp and chilly. Runner goes at first, and a foul back. Gomes goes out to relay some signals. High pop, foul, out of play again. This will be, I believe it's the seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up. That's three straight that he's fouled off. <laughs> Again, the one-two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. McAllister fans have paired. We've reached the seventh inning stretch 
Brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. On a cloudy, foggy, rainy night, the Indians lead the Brewers 5-2, to two, and it's time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Matt in Detroit tonight, Justin Verlander came three outs away from his third career no-hitter, but it ended right here in the top of the ninth. Chris Iannetta double down the left field line for the Angels. Their only hit of the evening. Tigers win the game 5-0. Back to you. Wow, just the one hitter. Thanks. For his third. Yeah, thanks, Al. And there's another great pitching matchup going on in Chicago where the Red Sox and White Sox are scoreless in the seventh inning. It's Chris Sale and Rick Porcello matching zeros. Wow. Indians are only a half game behind Chicago in the AL Central. They started the night tied with Detroit, identical records. But the Tigers have stopped a five game losing streak with that win over the Angels. Gomes with a ground ball to short. Segura long throw. Oh, nice pick at first by Adam Lynn for out number one. Yeah, it was nice on the backside of that play. Had a long throw. And tough to get it going. He realized he had to get rid of it, and there's some help on the other end right there. That's where you need a good first baseman that can sit out there and save your infielders. That was not a, a, a quick short hop. That was sort of a tweener. But he picked it nicely. Breaking ball is up high. That curveball drops in for a strike. And a foul back that nailed. Jonathan Lucroy, as if it hasn't been a bad enough night already for the Brewers' backstub, who's just been pelted by wild pitches and balls in the dirt. Yeah. This time he gets a foul right off the kneecap, I think, on the shin guards. Well, it, you know what? That's one he's going to. Oh, no. Big right toe. Right off the toe. Yowza. Sergeant Hulker. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's 
It's one of those uh, those nights. Uh, what, what was it uh, earlier in the year? I think Toronto came to town. Martin was doing the catch. Oh, yeah. And he was all over that play. The, the pitchers, there was a young rookie that was starting, throwing about 95, the, the rookie Sanchez. And I mean to tell you, he was all over the place, a lot like what Luke Croy is doing tonight. And you talk about earning your money. They have, I don't know how they get up the next day, to be honest with you. Look at it. Start short up in the pitcher. He threw one back and it got the see pitcher. See how you like it. Right. Let me see you get down and take a few. <laughs> well, you remember when Tony Pena used to catch here with, with Mesa. He'd fire back. They'd play a, a game of burnout. Yeah. He didn't like the pitch he threw. He'd go back and throw it just as hard as it came in. Sometimes he walked out and he'd, you know, get him in the chest to, to wake him up. That breaking ball. <laughs> oh, look at him. He's shaking his head back there. All right, I give mean, it to Luke me. I mean, Luke Croy's like, I've had enough. You know what? He has. I mean, you don't mind going in there in the dirt, but this is so far in front of the plate, and he's had, I'm telling you, at least five of those tonight uh, that were that far out in front of the plate. That ball's hit hard right at the second baseman, Jeanette. Now Monte retired two down. Here's our T-Mobile data strong fan photo of the game. And remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO data strong fan for a chance to have one of your pictures shown during an upcoming telecast at all courtesy of T-Mobile. Two down for Jerry Sands, who is 0 for 1. He has walked twice, scored a run, and struck out. Down in the dirt. You know, the umpire ought to put the uh, ball bag on Luke Croy's side so he can just reach into his side and throw it back to the pitcher instead of reaching back. <laughs> Tim Wilk, you having to hand him the ball every time it's in the dirt. There's another one. This yeah. is unbelievable. That's why I'm saying just let the catcher hold on to him. The three one <laughs> and he fouls one into the dirt. Well Jack Efton might have to go dig up another couple of dozen a balls. Of do well we've probably already gone through eight. There you go. Stay tight. Hit foul. You don't have to worry about it if it's uh, away from you now. Nobody's on base. <laughs> Weekly tap. be a base hit. Here's a throw to first. Not in time. Sands beats it out for a two-out infield single. I knew uh, at third Herrera wasn't going to get there. You're playing back. There's two strikes. There's two outs. The only one that had a chance is a pitcher. And he actually did a pretty nice job to get over on the barehanded side, got rid of it quickly, but Sands beats it out. So an infield single. They have eight hits. They need two more hits before this game's over to go to uh, nine. Nine games at home with double-digit hits, ten hits. It's been a weird game, though, but they had eight walks. In the so, first four innings. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you you had your share of base runners, and they have five runs on the board. They have about nine stranded. Another ball in the dirt. They have had opportunities galore tonight.
Here's the 1 0. You know, I was just thinking, <laughs> watching Tim Welke throw each and every one of these balls out of play after they're in the dirt. Yeah. I just, this spring, I'd be at my son's games on the junior varsity. And, I mean, it balls out of play. It hits off the side of the the, the brick building. Yeah. Down the street six times. They grab it, throw it right back in play. Sure. Gets it, hits it a couple of trees. I mean, uh, hold seriously. on. Time out. We got to go fetch it. <laughs> and, Oh, yeah. They go through some baseballs. There's nights with the foul balls and the things that happen. And in the dirt, like tonight, I'm, I'm sure he's gone through eight dozen tonight. Maybe more than that. Jack, if you're listening, you shoot us a text. The 1-1 swung on and missed. He may be in there cooking soup and having some uh, <laughs> while he's waiting for this thing to end. The one, two. You're talking about that 10 hit mark. Both Baltimore and Kansas City have 10 hits in their game tonight. Orioles lead at 6 3, though, in the seventh inning. Okay. That's where you see both teams get the 10 hits, and one of them only scored three times. It just goes to show well, you if I'll you don't tell hit you, what, home you know runs, where they're playing? They're in Kansas, Kansas City. City. So if you don't hit the log ball, which is a tough place to hit uh-huh. a home run, then that's where you, you can see 10 hits and only three runs. They're not a home run hitting club. Toronto doesn't have those kind of problems. They've scored oh, 10 boy. runs on nine hits against Texas tonight. They're in the sixth inning down in Arlington. Those guys could hit them out of the Grand Canyon. Down and in. Full count to Ramirez. That's hit pretty well to right, but right at Santana, who makes the catch to end the inning. Seven in the books. Cleveland five, Milwaukee two. Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Well fans can enjoy two dollar beer pregame on Friday the Indians will open up a weekend series against the Angels two dollar Miller Lite cans available from five to seven in the right field district. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. We go now to the eighth inning. And the new pitcher for Cleveland is Brian Shaw. (laughs) 
Giovanni Urshela comes into the ball game, and he takes over for Jose Ramirez at third base defensively. For Milwaukee, Luke Roy, <laughs> Braun, and Lynn. I figure he's he the angriest lead. man in the ballpark. He had to lead the inning off, didn't he? I'm surprised he didn't come up to hit with his uh, gear on. Don't bother taking it off. It's been a tough night back there for him tonight. Missed inside, ball one. Luke Roy has flied to right, popped up on the infield, and struck out his last time up. Right field near the line. That's going to be a fair ball in the corner. Chisinau with a good retrieval and a good throw on the money end. What's the call? He was safe. He called him safe. And Lindor's telling uh, Tito in the dugout, to, hey, you better come check it. Lindor's saying that he got him. What a throw by Lonnie. Well, it'll be at least a single. He slid late, and I think that was the deceiving thing. This ball went sliced just stayed inside the line down there watch Chisenhall get it on one hop and fires a nice one hop throw oh I don't I think they got him well they're gonna they're gonna take a, a look at it let's see he's in he's in Did he come off the bag though? that's what we don't know his foot was in there by the time it was a very good throw his, he slid late and that was the deceiving thing. I don't know if he came off the bag, and I don't know if we'll be able to see it. But Lindor, if he did, if he did come off the bag, and that's why he's out, Luke Roy might go right to the bus. Well, yes, he might. It is under review. I mean, he his foot got there. Maybe he did come off. I don't know if they'll be able to see it with their any of their replays. But, you know, we've seen calls over the course of the year where that happens. Now, is he on the base with his hip? Can they tell? Lindor, Lindor did a it? good job yeah. of keeping it on him through the play. You know, the thing of that is, though, too, when you want your guys to, to maintain the tag uh, through the play, is sometimes their momentum will knock you right back off the back. So he's safe. He's safe. He's out. Well, I, I don't, don't know, know if that I, I, back leg is out. Yeah. You don't know. From that angle, it, it may look like he came off, but you can't tell for sure. Tell you what, it was a tough call for Mike Everett. You could see him kind of waiting. Looked like he was ready to call him out, and then, no, nah, I think he's safe. And that's what he, you know. I'm... Originally, he saw that foot get in there before the tag. So, I, I, you see, he's in great position to see anything, and he didn't really see him come off the base, although Lindor did have the tag applied all the way through. Yeah, the problem forever is he's behind. Right. But he's in pretty good Luke position. Roy. He did see the, the original play coming in. I don't know if they have enough to overturn this, but we're only seeing it from that angle. And, and there again, that's, you know, replay is limited to the angles that we have. If you've got a camera that's right down the between first and second base, right, right. you're going to see if he's off the base a lot better than... No, the they're going to let the pitcher have. throw. So they want to look at it from every angle that they have. And they have different angles than what we have, too. So Let's Here you go. We'll get one anything. from behind. Now, this is more from where the umpire's looking from. You see the foot gets in there. He's safe. There's the tag. But we can't see if that knee is touching the base. And then his backhand is on the base. So you don't know that from that angle either. We know that the front foot comes off the base after the after the tag is applied. Right there, foot's off. Okay. The question is, where's that right leg? Is the right leg touching the base Boy, as he's sliding across? It's a tough call. Tough to see. Well, here comes the headsets. He's safe. Yeah, they, they didn't find enough to overturn it. So the call stands. Okay, so a double for Luke Roy. 
heck of a throw by Lonnie Chisholm. Yes, it was. A, uh, really played nicely off the wall to come in and uh, get that ball in and get it right to second base. Good throw. To his credit, he has not looked like a guy who just started playing right field about a month ago. Uh, I, I agree. It hasn't really been a month, really, when you think about it. He has. He's looked very comfortable out there. Ryan Braun chases a slider for strike one. Fastball in off the plate. Fouled away. Hey, want to send out congratulations tonight to one of our producers here at Fox Sports Ohio, and that is Mike Bachman and his wife, who welcomed twins tonight. Well, congratulations, Michael. Haley Jane and Charles David. Haley and Charlie. So congratulations to the Bachmans and... Whew. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> when we see Mike in spring training, he's going to look even more haggard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or he might look great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mom's going to have her he's hands gonna, full. So is he. He's going to have his hands full. But congratulations. That's great. Upstairs with it. That slider hit the center field. Charging hard, Almonte can't get to it. Backed up nicely by Lonnie. He'll throw to first to keep the double play in order. Lucroy goes to third because he had to hold up. Almonte was screaming in like maybe he had a chance to catch it. Well, the good thing there is that Chisholm Hall backed up because at second base, Lucroy had to wait. He wasn't off and running, so it was a tough one to read where he couldn't took, uh, take off to try and score. There you'll see. In comes Almonte. You were not sure. So he went for it. Chisholm Hall was behind, so he moves up a base, and you get the ball in, you keep the double play in order. Right. See, that's a play you had to try and dive for. That's a tough one to read as a base runner. And here comes Chisholm Hall right behind him, exactly what you have to do. In the meantime, Milwaukee has the tying run at the plate with nobody out on the eighth, and it's Adam Lynn who's 0 for 3 on the night. He's hit 17 home runs this year, but he's 0 for 7 in the series. And it's up high, ball one. <laughs> Swung on and missed. Brian Shaw with his team leading 56th appearance of the year Cody Allen two behind him in appearances even though Cody's pitched six more innings overall than Shaw strike called outside corner but as Brian told Andre not recently you know he he likes to throw a lot. He likes to get in that sort of rhythm as a relief pitcher and oh, know man. that he's going to get that. an opportunity to pitch on a regular basis. 
Now, if that was a strike, he, he, his bat would have had to be about another foot longer. Stay out there. Strikes then, him out. Yeah, you get him to swing at it. Had to swing at that pitch, although that pitch was a little bit higher. Well, he got a little help, and he took advantage of it and gets a strikeout for Shaw. Chris Davis, the batter, and a dangerous one here. Look at he's talking to himself there after that one call. Davis homered back in the second. He has fouled out, flied out since then. Brewers at the corners, and Shaw deals, and it's up high, ball one. Swung on and missed. He was trying to tie it up with one big swing. Nothing left in the bag there. You talk about, yeah, he's just keep that ball away from him. If he's going to beat you, you got to make him go to right center field. He's trying to hook it and hit it deep, and he hit one earlier in his first at bat, a straight fastball. Out of play. One ball, two strikes. Davis missed five weeks earlier this year, 35 games in all, when he had a torn meniscus in his right knee, had surgery. Amazing how fast these guys can come back from that kind of thing. And come back with a vengeance. Davis has been swinging a hot bat of late, especially where the home run ball is concerned. He's hit 10 home runs now in the month of August. Strike three called! Shaw rings him up back to back K's here in the eighth. Well, Brian comes back, throws the perfect pitch inside edge. He was not looking for that, had to be looking away because he couldn't pull the trigger. So back to back strikeouts now with two outs. And Domingo Santana, the batter, another dangerous hitter, though. Shaw, after putting two on, back-to-back -back hits, has to deal with the, the big thumpers now. Consecutively, as Santana looks at ball one outside. Gets away and down to second base goes Ryan Braun. Now, while that certainly isn't something you, you're going to be happy about, at the end of the day, it's the guy at the plate you're most concerned with. Well, that's true. I mean, a base hit now could make it a one run game, but still the tying runs at the dish. And that's if you're an outfielder. In this situation, you, you'd probably just throw it into second base. That is your main concern, keeping him out of scoring position, the guy at the dish. Missed outside. 3-0. and Now this could be Brian Shaw looking at Santana, knowing that he's got good power. and He's got a, a switch hitter in Elian Herrera on deck. Never want to load the bases and put that tying run aboard, but it might be a case where once you fall behind, you're not going to give in to him. Well, you see who's warming up, don't you? He might be into the game if he walks him. Well, he went right at Santana on the 3-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. I mean, that's just here you go. Challenge City right there. Full count. Check out the elevation. See if it was above the belt. 3-1 mm. pitches a hitter. You got to get after it. He did. He comes up empty. 13,052 here tonight. 
Making some noise. Payoff pitch. Fouled off the facing of the Brewer dugout. Payoff pitch, swung on and missed. Shaw strikes out three in a row to end the eighth inning after a double and a single started the frame. Brewers do not score. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 5-2 Cleveland. Time now for our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. Back in the second inning, Jason Kipnis with a two out, two run double that led to a third run after the misplay by Davis and left. And the Indians have never looked back since that point. They added a run in the third and one more in the fourth. And now, in the bottom of the eighth, Kipnis will lead it off against left hander Will Smith. Smith came on in uh, last night's ball game. Gave up the two run homer to Brantley back in the eighth inning. Coming on for the Will Smith is six and two, making his 60th appearance of the year. But he's only pitched 47 and two thirds innings, which tells you with a lot of left handers, sometimes they're in for a lefty or two and matchup guy and gone, yeah. right? Almost hit him. Ball one. Boy, good change of pace right there. Took something off and evens the count of one on one. That's where both he and Brantley have been so good this year against left handed pitchers. Because any lefty worth his salt's got some kind of a breaking ball to get him to chase. And more times than not, they don't chase that pitch. Well, when they can lay off of it and, and get them back in the count, they both drive the ball the other way very well also. So they stay on it. They don't try and pull it. That one he got out in front. He's, he's yelling at himself right now. 
He knew it was a bad pitch, but he just gave up. Well, it, you still got one left. You certainly don't want to swing at it with two. Fights off a good fastball at 95. Well, pitchers think, okay, he thinks I'm going back out there again. So you try and come inside with something um, hard and in and where you think he's looking away. But that's all you have to do is fall off that fastball because eventually you would think he's going to come back that breaking ball again. You just have to make sure he, bring, he, he gets it up if he does. That ball's hit hard. Deep right field. Santana looking up. Goodbye. Oh, oh, oh. How's that for hitting? Jason Kipnis says, get that cheese out of here. His seventh home run this year, and the solo shot extends yeah. the Tribe lead to 6-2. Tried to sneak a piece of cheese past the rat, and he couldn't get it by him inside. That's what I'm saying. Kipnis just reacted in right there, even if he was looking away. He reacted in, and boy, quick through the zone and got himself a home run. Watch this. They wanted it maybe more so away. He kept it in and really took advantage of it. Now, I don't know if it was a, if he was trying to cut it. or the, the fastball before was 95. This one only 92. Well, yeah, that to me is just a good job of hitting after three, he chased one in the dirt. Could three miles an hour be that big a difference? Well, it could. He didn't want it where he put it. I know that. It's his first career hit against Will Smith. He was 0 for 7 with a bunch of punch outs before that well, one. That's the way to end it. See, that time you may have, uh, you know, tricked yourself thinking, okay, I'm going to double up on that heater. Well, he was ready for yes, it. Yes, he was. So that gives the Indians nine hits now, and it uh, makes that a four run lead. Francisco Lindor has walked twice and singled. He's also scored a run. And he has three stolen bases, and now he's got his second hit. And that gives the Indians their tenth hit of the night. So that's ten hits in nine straight home games. Boy, a nice swing. He knew he hit it well. Watch that front foot just go down, and the hands come through the hitting area. Line drive. And now Michael Brantley, who has walked twice and singled. It's now their longest streak since 1992 in that category. That 1992 club, you're talking Candy Maldonado and Al Albert would have been there in 92, right? Yes. Kenny Lofton, I think, had just come over. Sandy was there, yeah. Now, Paul Sorrento was already there in 92. Of course, Sandy. Brooke Jacoby. A little bit outside. Ground ball to third. Herrera to second for one on the first. It's an inning ending double play. Oh, I beg your pardon. Two down. I was thinking there was already an out. That'll only get him two. And it will give Carlos Santana a chance to bat with the bases empty. <laughs> Tribe extending the lead on the home run by Jason Kipnis here in the eighth. He's driven in three on the night. Carlos Santana hitless in the ballgame. 
And one for nine in the series. And that's a base hit in the left field. Santana poked it between Herrera and Segura. And after Herrera was able to cut off Brantley's ball and turn it into a double play, this one he could not get to. Difference here is that Santana hit that hard and coming off the dirt, a little top spin, it just jumped right through yeah, the hole. Find the hole right now. Lonnie Chisnell's two out of four. Single, a double, an RBI, and a run scored. And he chases one on the dirt, and it's quickly 0 2. <laughs> Strike three called, inning over. But Jason Kipnis goes deep and extends the Indians' lead to 6-2 as we go to the ninth. Hill Tribe leads the Brewers 6-2, to two, looking for the sweep here, and just three more outs if Cody Allen's able to do that, along with Jensen Imel. Jensen, second straight night, Cody Allen comes in in a non-save situation. You've been there before. Yeah, this is probably one of the more tough appearances because you're already geared up, thinking that you're going to come in with the save opportunity. Now you got to focus and execute pitch to pitch, keep that four-run lead. Indians live after the game, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Back upstairs now to Matt and Rick. You know, I would think it would be almost more difficult if you're not coming into the game. You know, in other words, it's kind of a blowout situation. And then all of a sudden, uh-oh. Here we it, go. And now it's a one-run game and you've got to kind of refocus as opposed to I'm going into a safe situation. Okay, now I've just got a little more cushion to work with. Yeah, these guys, they they know. They they get focused and they, they go into it like, hey, let's go. I'm ready to go. He had the opportunity last night. And they they took the save away when they scored the two runs. He came in and went one, two, three. You look at his last week's Ooh. work. He's been a horse. But, you know, tomorrow, of course, is the off day. And as, as Terry says, and some of my pitchers, they'd rather work. Come in here and go to work. Bottom third of the order. Elian Herrera, Gene Segura, and Logan Schaefer do up. 
Fastball is outside, ball one. Foul out of play. Six runs on 11 hits for the Indians. One error, they've left 11. Two runs, six hits for Milwaukee. One error, they've stranded seven. Breaking ball, couldn't get him to chase. Good tilt, good bite. Yeah, that's one where maybe you get to two strikes, he would. Yeah. You know, and one one count. He was able to lay off of that one. To center. Almonte sprinting back. Can't get to it. It's going to short hop the wall, and it's going to enable Herrera to, well, he'll hold at second base. He had, uh, he had designs on turning that into a triple, but down four. He knows he cannot get thrown out. So it's a leadoff double for Milwaukee here in the ninth. Well, he gets on this fastball. That one was middle. He didn't chase that uh, breaking ball, so he knew he was going to get a heater, and he drove it to left center field to be a double. That's his uh, second straight hit. He's also walked once today. Now Gene Segura, who is one for three on the night. Strike called outside edge. Foul right back by Segura. Shoots it the other way on the off-speed pitch. And it's 0-2. Quick road trip for Milwaukee. They went to Washington for three, to Cleveland for two, and then they go right back home to face Cincinnati and then Pittsburgh. I'll tell you one thing. Everybody, as we know, is in the division at the end of the year. It's not going to be a whole lot of fun for the teams in the Central. So many of the teams are loaded and trying to make a run at it. The Cardinals, the Pirates, and the Cubs. So for Milwaukee and Cincinnati, when they play those three teams, which they've got a lot of games with them, yeah. they have their well, those, hands full. Well, that's what they're going to consider. Those are must wins. The only thing they can do is play spoilers. Sure. You know, go out there. That's the only thing that they have to shoot for. Boy, but you think of those games when those teams play each other, when you have the, you know, Cards and the Pirates and the Cubs and the Pirates. You know, it's good, yeah. good baseball. Uh, every game will mean something. In the month of September, Milwaukee has seven with St. Louis, and they've got six with the Cubs. They'll finish up with Pittsburgh in the uh, middle of the month. They'll start the month with the, the three games at home against the Pirates and then go to Pittsburgh for three. So, as you said, I mean, those are those won't be hard games to get up for. Yeah, that's the only thing they could do. They'll, they'll want to go out there and try and spoil for somebody. That is hit hard to right field. Coming hard is Chisinau. Makes the catch. And that's out number one. 
Looking back at our keys to the game, brought to you by Wayside Furniture. How did the layoff affect Cody Anderson? Other than his inability to get deep into the game, not much. He pitched well. But, uh, you know, they kept him to 76 pitches, so he went four and a third. And the Indians once again came up with ten hits. And Ninth time. Ninth and, straight time here in this ballpark. And they've scored five or more in eight of their last nine home games. That's the key. You know, normally we talk about four or more. When they score four or more, this club's record's off the charts at 45 and 17. They score five or more with 38 and 8, and that's where they've been at home of late. Yes, he did. He chased it, I do believe. He yes, sure sir, did. says Tim Welke, the home plate umpire. And it's Three call. Rings him up with a pitch over the outside corner, and there are two down on the ninth. There's a nice curveball away right there. Not much you could do with that pitch. Take a look at it and take a walk. Side corner, a called strike. The 0 1 pop to left. This should do it. Brantley makes the catch, and the Indians sweep the series from Milwaukee. The Tribe has won six of their last seven at home as they go to 60 and 66 on the year. Milwaukee leaves town 53 and 74. They've lost 11 of their last 13 on the road. The win goes to Jeff Manship. It'll be his first of the year. He's 1-0. And the loss to Jimmy Nelson, who had been on fire for Milwaukee, but his season record is now even at 10 and 10. Another good game offensively for the Indians in terms of, you know, putting up crooked numbers. They had a three spot in the second, and then they were able to add on to it with single runs in the third, fourth, and ultimately the eighth inning to win it. Yeah, they, you know, continue to do it. They had an opportunity to even score more. They had a lot of walks, eight walks today. Um, but they go out there, they continue to keep adding on, and it, it's coming throughout the lineup. So it, it was fun to watch. Ninth game. Ninth consecutive game here in this ballpark where they have 10 or more hits. Well, and uh, obviously, the, the, you know, the guys we highlighted at the beginning, at the top of the order, Jason Kipnis, two-run double, solo homer. Francisco Lindor reached base safely four times tonight, stole three bases, scored a run. Michael Brantley had a hit, walked twice. So those are the, the, the table setters getting the job done yes, here tonight. Yes, they are. All right, we'll take a timeout. Back with some final thoughts right after this.